Live from Rialto, California, Mark and Andre present The Mark and Andre Show. Tonight's topic, Portland, Oregon, the Portland Retro Game Expo, The Simpsons, and Fox's found footage craze in the late 90s, all culminating here tonight on The Mark and Andre Podcast Show. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark and Andre. It's a very confusing introduction. You I know. I kind really of sure, said... You weren't Mark, really sure what we were going to do today, I guess. I kind of said Mark and Andre like 18 times <laughs> before we even got to On go today's in. Mark and Andre? <laughs> Portland? Yeah. Mark and Andre? No, it's just because we, we barely... I don't know. I, I don't travel much. Mm-hmm. But when I do, um, I make sure never to document it. Right, right. Like I, I, no evidence needed. Yeah, I think every experience. It's funny. One of, one of our uh, one of our guy, one of the guys that went with us is actually the polar opposite of me, and mm-hmm. actually took photos of everything. Oh, I think he did all the work for you. You know, so yeah, if exactly. You need any memories? You can just you <laughs> all know, the memories up. will be followed via his account. Like, hey, dude, can you give me a memory real quick? I just kind of forgot that trip, and I'm pretty sure he has plenty in stock for you. So you didn't miss out because I'm just like you. It's like, eh, I don't need to record it. I'll remember it. Yeah. And then when I'm 50, just be like, what was that again? <laughs> Where was I when I was 28? Wait, Portland was a state? <laughs> the, city? the state of Portland. The state of Portland. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Mark and Andre podcast show, the only film, entertainment, and conspiracy podcast on Spreaker.com. Oh, yeah. Tonight's topics we have for you are a brief tr- a brief trip uh, through Portland, Oregon, also a little combination of the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. We'll also be discussing The Simpsons, the good, the bad. Uh, the funny, the most memorable. I don't think there's going to be any bad at all, actually. <laughs> With the last topic we have as well is going to be a special one. And this one's going to be the most comical because then we're going to give people to, uh, the links and whatever to look them up. But in the late 90s, Fox and UPN decided it was going to be a good idea in light of the X-Files mm-hmm. to make found footage documentaries. Mm-hmm. And we'll just leave it at that. But with us is our special guest, um, Slick. He's our Simpsons guru. He knows uh, a lot more than I do. And his collection that I saw recently actually makes mine look like a a sack of crap. Oh, damn. (laughs) Slick, why don't you uh, lay it down on us. Let us know where you're from, what your podcast, you know. uh, This is your chance at a shameless promotion. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, you look sick, you pasty bastard. <laughs> now, uh, what's up, guys? I'm I'm happy to be here on the Eric Andre show or whatever. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, my name is uh, Slick, and I come from uh, Green Thing Productions. Uh, that's my my YouTube, right? And we do our podcast on there. Uh, a lot better than this one, I can guarantee you that. But uh, Damn. <laughs> no, I'm just messing around. It's tremendously worse. But, uh, <laughs> this is open mic night. <laughs> Coming up next on Premium Blend, Slick. Yeah. Well, no. Um. Yeah, you can find me on uh, YouTube.com/slash Mr. Green Thing Six Six Six. Nice. Or uh, what's the other one? Uh, Mr. Stream Thing GTP. Oh, I like that one. And that one is uh, strictly streaming stuff, but uh, and that's where we do our, our podcast. And uh, I mean, that's about well, it. What do you um, discuss in your podcast? If you don't ev- mind me asking, everything. That's why it's cool. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's why it's way better. Than no, it's <laughs> it's actually. I'm I'm not even gonna lie to you guys. Like, it's not structured. So, I mean, it's just we just go with it. You know what I mean? Like, uh, all of us. You just all, open your mouths and like whatever happens that's, from that. That's moment. basically what happens, dude. Because because what it comes down to is. All these guys that I work with, they're intelligent dudes, but we're all, all our minds are scrambled, dude. So it's mm-hmm. like, we can't sit down and just be like, all right, we got to do this, this, and this. Because when we try that, it goes bad. It so sounds, we, you know, it sounds like a bunch of like engineers that do meth. <laughs> That's so it's a, bunch, it's a bunch of just like... <laughs> you know my friends too well. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly you've met them. <laughs> 
That's dope. I like that. That sounds pretty. No, cool. No, but we, I mean, we have fun, and I mean, that's what it's, that's what a podcast is about. God damn that's, it, that's what it is. Open dude. your mouth and have a discussion. Well, like on on that channel, um, one of my my co-hosts from that podcast, he does a, another one on on Thursday. It's, it's called the A Forty Review, mm-hmm. and it's all like weed stuff. It's like. Okay. And like I don't do weed or anything, so it's like I can't even participate in that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, you like just, the, you just go, hey, good luck, man. Yeah. <laughs> the most I can do is is when they have callers, is call up and talk shit. Like mm-hmm. that's the most I can do. Yeah, <laughs> hey, that's what makes it fun, dude. But, <laughs> but um, I mean, that's that's pretty much what we do. Like on our channel, uh, we get we do a little of everything. Like uh, we do, we'll do like music videos. We'll do whatever, dude. Oh, like I'm it's, subscribe, man. I'll be there. I love like it. I don't know. I. I it's hard to describe because this is a great promotion for. <laughs> I know. I don't, know. I, I don't know what it is. Just check it because, out because it, it's it's just a bunch of shit we do, man. Because well, like I'll put up a video whenever I feel like it, and usually what I'm doing is like I like playing video games, and then and then I'll just put that up. You know, I, I, I like think it. it. I think it's funny, so it's just like I'll just put that up, and I don't know. Well, that's just if we if we film something like for example, like when we went to Portland, I'll I'll make a video of that and put that up, or when we go to some convention, I you know I'll just put that up. It's perfect. I don't know. I I don't like I don't like it too structured because then I'm limiting myself. You know, and what I'm then saying? you get bored in the process. Exactly, right? and then I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Welcome. Oh, thank you, Slick. Welcome to the Mark and Andre show. <clears throat> Let me do a quick favor for all of us, and let's get the commercial break out of the way first. Let's do it. Um, as you guys may know, this is our first commercial break, and let me get the spot going. Here we go. Hello, this is Mark Flores from the Mark F Podcast channel here to let you know that this podcast episode is brought to you by Game Swappers. Come on down to Game Swappers, located at 4520 Holt Boulevard in Montclair, California, to buy, sell, and trade your current and retro video games from Nintendo Entertainment System to the PS4. Keep in mind that if you share any one of my podcast episodes through any form of social media, you'll get 10% off your entire purchase, or you'll get 10% more towards your retro game trade-ins. Follow Game Swappers on Instagram at G-A-M-E-S-W-A-P-P-E-R-S. That's G-A-M-E-S-W-A-P-P-E-R-S. Game Swappers. Buy, sell, and trade. Perfect. So, Can you me... buy from Game Swappers? You can buy, sell, and trade from oh, Game Swappers. Um, what if I want to donate? Yeah. Can oh, you don't... trust me. Uh, <laughs> they would love that. They would love that there. Do can they... I rob Game Stoppers? Game Stoppers, yes, you can. <laughs> but not Game Swappers. <laughs> those, those... It sounds like Game Stoppers would be the company right across the street from them. That would be their, like, <laughs> rival their Mondo Burger or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> their Mondo Burger to their Good Burger. I love it. Those are the guys that... that... Think they got better ideas? Let's try new things. Let's slang dick for a little bit. You know, like, <laughs> let's prostitute. They're, they get lost in the plot. They never even sell games after a while. What I'm really amazed at is that Kel Mitchell's ears are ringing because you mentioned Good Burger. <laughs> I think Keenan Thompson doesn't give a shit anymore. But... Kel's looking at that last check that he's afraid to cash because that's the end. Oh of no, he cashed, it. He, ca- yeah. he cashed it. He's looking at the check stub. Like, <laughs> oh, he cashed it. <laughs> I, I pray that man still gets residuals. Hey, I think I he's, pray getting, he's still alive. He's dude. got something. Uh, does, is he doing a uh, phone commercials with Keenan right now? He, I think he did. Like, I think that was like one time thing. But I think it was like green screened where they weren't even in the same. <laughs> yeah, the one I would assume. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so Sunday, Sunday night. Um, well, as, if you don't know, this this is heavy. Sunday, this is getting intense. No, no, this is it's be, this uh, segment really uh, came as a sp- uh, like really sporadically because of the fact that I was so irritated mm-hmm. by it. So Sunday, I'm driving uh, home here and there with Slick and the gang, and we're going heading back to from church from uh-huh. yeah from <laughs> from Oregon uh, down to California. It's like an 18 hour drive, and with Alex driving, it's a 25 hour drive. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love you, Alex. Thank you for the VHS you gave me. He gave me a wrestling tape, by the way. Nice. nice. Yeah, I have to pick it up. Anyway, so Sunday, The Walking Dead premieres, and this cliffhanger that they left us on in Season 6 is going to culminate on Episode 1, Season 7. Probably Mm -hmm. the biggest one from the whole Mm -hmm. series. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Now, I'm scrolling through my social media. It's it's 6 o'clock. The show on the Pacific Coast premieres at 9. Mm Mm-hmm. Per, uh, per, like a strong amount of my friends on my social media feeds are all from the West Coast. Mm-hmm. So I think, you know what, me scrolling a little early doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Then I get a little little, uh, little Instagram thing saying, wow, I can't believe such an, you know, I'm keeping it spoiler free. I can't believe so and so. You're a good man, even though a week later yeah. you're still a good man. <laughs> you're still a good man. Yeah, you're still trying. And I appreciate that. Dude. I respect I, it. 
Because you haven't seen it yet. I've seen it. Oh, okay, good. Oh, okay. it would have been it would have been over. You think I can't? But, I can't go on my phone for a week, dude. Forget yeah, it. No. <laughs> but, okay, so you're saying spoil free, spoil yeah. free in this case. So, so you discover some news. Yeah, I discover some news that said persons die in The Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. I find that out three hours before I before the show premieres. Before it even premieres. <laughs> before I even get a chance to even. Oh, there it. Uh, before I even get a chance to uh, to even watch it. Right. So I watch it a couple days later. Okay. So. Man, so your, your experience was ruined. Exactly, that, because that moment, despite the fact whether I knew it or not, because I thought the people that I thought were going to die were just totally left field of who actually died mm. because of certain things. I thought, um, but all vague. <laughs> I know exactly. I have to keep yeah. it like that. But I mean, my question is this: Who's to blame when mm. someone gets spoiled an ending of a movie or a show? Like when you observe it through social media, who's to blame? Is it the person that that, that, ex- that uh, gave away the spoiler, or me. you, absolutely, or me? I, honestly, okay, oh, let's yeah. do it. All right, because this Great. Is I love the, being in a debate. Because this is it's the day your of. fault. It's Ooh. your fault. Ooh. and it's your fault, Slick. Oh man, god damn it! Because I don't like you. We're, we're about in to a, get into we're, a race we're, war we're, right no, now, bro. Because we're in a day and age, <laughs> and it's unfortunate. Uh-huh. This is the reality of it. We are now in a we're in a day and age where. Uh, social media is an extension of us as people, right? Mm-hmm. You might as well just look at that as a digital form of our, our social experience. It's the same thing as going to a party like right before you go watch the premiere. So mm-hmm. you went to a party and somehow some cat from New York flew immediately to you. <laughs> Yo, son, will you catch the walking dead, B? Yo, man bodies, B. Like, and they tell you all the shit. What's the cat's name that you like? Oh, Yo, man. he's body, B. He's body. He's, body. he's stuffed, B. He's stuffed. <laughs> <laughs> Dead ass. Call the tax. I put that. I put that on my t- my Tim's B. That's on Mars B. <laughs> you know what I mean? All types of crazy blood coming All out of there. Types- <laughs> <laughs> All kinds of blood was extracted. You B. remember that one candy back in there we used to gushes? Yeah, he looked like a fucking gusher, B. <laughs> a yellow gusher. You know I already mean? got the pictures, B. Look at him. So, in all seriousness, though, <laughs> oh, I mean, we're God. at a, we're at a day and age where social media is an extension of ourselves. Okay. And- uh-huh. Without a doubt, we know. You should know for a fact that the New York audience has already seen the show. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. you have to like schedule your own self, right? This guy yeah. lives like a block this, away from him, though. <laughs> this, guy's, this guy's a West Coast cat. He, uh, he's a West Coast cat that yeah. actually got the info. Well, because he has Dish or DirecTV, oh, and they sweet. get the feed from like directly from of AMC, they do, I guess. Which I don't understand. <laughs> you know. But even okay, if it, even if it wasn't him, though, yeah. one way or another, it's going to end up trending. Excuse me. In Facebook topics, because yeah. we go to Facebook training, you get that info. Yeah. Three hours ahead, without a doubt. Especially Twitter. Twitter has hashtags that are trending. Oh, yeah. If you click that joint, you already find oh, out yeah. what happens. If I know that, I know the fact that I'm clicking a hashtag. I'm mm-hmm. gonna pull myself in the fucking rabbit hole. Oh, so home. you actually avoided like every it, by all costs you tried to avoid it. Oh yeah, no but then I'm scrolling you... on my Instagram and some guy posts a spoiler three mm-hmm. hours before the fucking show. I still have to say that it's your fault, no. and and that's really you unfortunate. Gotta give it a, you gotta at least give it a minute, dude. I, I, you know that's that's what I'm afraid. Not even of. the end of the night. Yeah. Not even like because I think we're we're at a point now yeah. where everything like we've. There used to be this weird gap. Yeah, there used to be hourly gaps between what we would post and share. Yeah. But I feel like we have all gotten to the point where our social media is an, a direct extension of what is happening in this very wait. moment. People can't wait. They can't wait. Like, I saw it first. Yes, like, they, they want to be the first to see it and they want to be the first to have a connection. So it's not like this person said it to piss you off. It's like no, they want other no. people. <laughs> he's no, a I heel. Think, he did it. Other... That was a total heel move, bro. Oh. <laughs> he did a like. That's the thing. Okay, he's, he's, he's a heel, heel right now. He well, then if he's an evil troll, then I, I guess my argument's dead. But I feel like a lot of people people want to have that like did you guys experience what i just saw yeah. like did you feel that pain of whatever just happened yeah because yeah. his his wasn't I'm, I'm i'm not gonna say i'm not even mad at i'm not even mad at the homeboy that did it anymore oh, i was he's already frustrated dead. he's already i know dead. exactly i already took care of him no. <laughs> i was frustrated in the beginning but then i had to let I had to cool my pies mm-hmm. i had to cool my jets then then <laughs> i just got a cheeseburger dude a cheeseburger calm down cool, cool my cheeseburgers you know what i'm saying <laughs> so i did that and mm-hmm. you know monday or tuesday comes by i get to see it with uh with my mom because that's our thing now because she breathes through I can't walking dead like much. like crazy but anyway so but the thing is is his post was super general it wasn't like a heat like a, a a mean post or it wasn't like a uh, oh man, like I'm doing this for the civil service of everyone on the West Coast. Mm-hmm. He is just really neutral. Are but you, if you, you read the sh- comics, are you willing to share what he said? Or you're oh yeah, no. It, it was a, it was an illustration of the person that got whacked on the uh, via the comics. Oh. 
And, you know, for me, yeah. actually reading the comics to and fro, I, like, knew exactly who died. Yeah. So, but I didn't know the other person, though. But okay. this other person is pretty much... He's he's expendable. He's Cracker Jacks. Right. He's not really. He's super expendable. God, wow. <laughs> but um, the the thing that sucks is that we have to be in the day and age back when when we used to watch I don't know Toonami and mm-hmm. the Dragon Ball Z like Dragon Ball Z episodes used to be new to us. Right. You had to go out of your way to spoil that for somebody. In this day and age, there, there you, was a bit of a, a trust system too. Exactly, and now in this day and age, you have to walk on eggshells to not spoil anyone because any immediate post that you post on social media affects someone else. Okay. You can affect someone's attitude. You can affect someone's whole day. Oh yeah, dude. which almost screwed up my whole night. I understand, but especially because this is a form of entertainment that you really attach to and you enjoy. Yeah, Absolutely. and this episode was meant to be a huge shocker, right? Yeah, uh, and I did see it, but I'm not a Walking Dead fan. But I was like, holy Christ, I, I would be devastated. But yeah. Um, oh, dude, it's haunting. Like it's been playing in my head since. Dude. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, no it's, joke. it's crazy. It's, it's, it's like watching a family member die. I understand. Yeah, no, it was like fuck, dude. Um, Very but in graphic. this case, I guess I take the perspective of someone that uh, you know just experiences the internet from the di- of different angle. Yeah, exactly. And I know that you know working on YouTube, there are YouTubers out there that get paid to give this information first. You know, yeah. or they 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 want to share the the information as soon as pop- possible to get more people to their channel, get more views, etc. But, but even then, when they do it on YouTube, they they'll post like a general picture and then put spoilers before you even watch it. Mm-hmm. A lot of people do that. But yeah, some people are just trapping you, where it's just like. This happened. Did you see it? And you're it's like, more, yeah, it. in, this yeah, was right. unavoidable. Well, okay. Well, in the context of a film, let's try a film. If you know that a film premiered on Friday, mm-hmm. or you know, a film premieres on Friday, do you not expect a bunch of spoilers to be online? Period. I would say this: for Civil War comes out, you don't expect spoilers within the hour it's released. See, but that's the thing with Civil War or with a movie. I don't, you know, with movies that I know I'm going to see later on that day. I'm not going to really, you know, I'm not going to really care. But something mm-hmm. I stress a lot of importance on, mm-hmm. like that, I wanted to see probably that very same day or somewhere close along the lines of later that, you know, later a couple of days down the line. Mm-hmm. I can't. I don't need it spoiled. Okay. Like that's yep. the only thing that I'm saying. It's like, like for someone to to, to deliberately <clears throat> do that. Uh, <laughs> they should go to hell. <laughs> yeah, no, it, well, t- it it shows a, a portion of their attitude. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, because someone consciously knows that if you post something, if you know people. that you're going to be doing something that's wrong. Mm-hmm. You're going to be doing something that's so taboo. It's kind of like double dipping the chip. Okay, you know, like <laughs> fuck. If I caught someone double dipping the chip. You ruined the batch, man. Shit. You're an asshole. Like the whole, I just get the dip and fucking throw it out. <laughs> Probably throw it at their face. <laughs> what about double dipping the dick? Ooh, double dipping the dick. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like, how do you feel about I mean, this, this whole argument? Double yeah. dick, dick double dipping is 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 controversial in its own right. But right. how do you feel about yeah, I don't even, the whole I don't even concept know how you do of that. of? I mean, I, well, well, let's say the subject that we're discussing is deliberate spoilers. Because mm-hmm. that's pretty much what it felt like. That's what you're describing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how do you feel about the subject of deliberate spoilers? Like, they know for a fact no one else may have seen this yet. And oh, dude, what, what, well, for example, like, okay, how you were talking about a movie, right? Mm-hmm. I, I don't feel such a strong connection to that just because I don't have a, the attachment to those characters yet. You know what I mean? Okay. But, for example, for like The Walking Dead, it's like I've been waiting months and months for that moment. And this was the premiere. This is the premiere. This is mm-hmm. the first episode. First episode of, of I don't know if it's the season or the season split. I can't remember, but no, it's the premiere of season seven. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but it was like the Walking Dead knows how to how to oh, bring really, it home. They got bad, the best bait around to reel you in. Oh, man. dude, that, it just, it's beautiful. And like I said, you just get attached to these characters, and you know, you just have feelings for them, man. And then so you want to know like what happened. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and then you instantly find out and it's and you it's never like, got to see it did it take away the the impact of what you saw of course okay because knowing that knowing the, the end happen. of the journey mm-hmm. you know the the reason you know the going along with it just it's already done for you okay you know what i mean i have as soon as i heard saw that i was so I was I was very upset. You should see but, it, but it's like it was hideous. <laughs> yeah, he's making the ugliest face. Pretty much the face you're doing right now. Just, just, keep just doing like it. Yeah. Distraught, <laughs> yeah, agonizing exactly. Face. But like if 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 Chubbs if Chubbsy's listening right now, I'm not mad at him. 
I'm mad at him. You know, <laughs> I'm not anymore because I already seen it. It's my pies have been cooled. When I see him, I'm gonna apologize. I know. I'm like, gonna this expression. I've this never could, heard. This could cool the pies. I'm gonna po- apologize to him. <laughs> um, but yeah. anyway, no, no. Well, just so. You know. what, but what I want to say is that it it takes it takes uh, a certain kind certain of consciousness <laughs> of being like being on the wrong side of uh, of good. Okay, you know what I mean. <laughs> You're going to be oh, – it's an evil the, move to do that. It is the wrong. You know what I'm okay. it's well, del- if, if you're doing it deliberately and you know that you're giving away an answer to something that hasn't premiered yet on the West Coast mm-hmm. for some people who get certain cable subscriptions, mm-hmm. then you're doing something bad. Well, I understand because I'm, I'm trying to find my own show in my own head that I would have that feeling towards. Yeah. Uh, it was Sherlock. There was okay. this uh, season finale for Sherlock that was kind of fucking crazy. And there, the follow-up, I wouldn't want that to be spoiled. Yeah. Um, but I, I see it like this, and I, I've seen it also like on Reddit and stuff like that. Uh, there's kind of this unwritten rule now. It's like if you didn't see it when it premiered, it's your fault, and that's fine. If you can't see it, we're in they also dude. But, yeah. But also, if you can't see it, it's like you have a 24 hour window to watch it. From the point you missed it, you have 24 hours to watch the show I, I and can, to stay off the internet. I can accept that rule. Stay off the internet for until you watch your show, because yeah. we are now in a culture where it's just. Man, they want to share the experience, and then we have those trolls out there that just want to fuck your day. But um, do you feel? But do you feel that for for someone to spoil something deliberately to those ex- to that extent that which I told you? Do you right. feel that that's that's sick? <laughs> it's, 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 it's all dem- I needed. It's demented, and uh, that person should be admitted. But <laughs> if in you know these unwritten rules that float about, I think it's like a common sense nowadays to you know if you didn't see the show when it was yeah. supposed to air, then. You gotta you just don't go on the internet. Yeah, I just feel don't like don't go it, on it, Facebook. It you throw that phone in the trash until it's you watch your show and yeah. then you come back. To I, it. I just feel like it shouldn't be pinned on me for some a move that someone did. Mm-hmm. Like that's like someone stabbing. I'm getting stabbed by a guy. He's like, "You're moving into my knife, <laughs> <laughs> fucking son of a bitch. Stop stabbing yourself." <laughs> Damn. You know what I mean? It's the same type of uh, situation. I but, feel like that was a real, true emotional pain you felt, and you use that analogy to express it. You yeah. felt like you got stabbed. That was good shit. I'm sorry, yeah. man. Um, but I mean, did you get spoiled? So you got spoiled too. I was cl- I was close because and we were right next to each other yeah. when this happened, and. And I just saw his face and like crumbled, mm-hmm. and he's like, "Oh fuck!" He just kept saying "fuck." I'm like, "Dude, are you all right?" Right? <laughs> and he and then he so he starts telling me, he's like, "The Walking Dead just got ruined for me." And I'm like, and all I could think was like, "Don't ruin it don't for me!" Say it. Don't, don't say it. You put your hand over his mouth. You're next. You just start choking him out. Put him, made him unconscious. I don't know how many times I told you, like, please don't, like, I don't. Know. Exactly. I don't, I don't know what was going on through his, his head. Like, well, I'm gonna fuck your day up now. You know? Oh, <laughs> you're next, so this fucker. evil is contagious. It's like, oh, yeah. I, I've been spoiled. Dude, every I, start, spoiled. I start panicking. I don't, yeah. I don't know if you noticed that, but I start panicking. Yeah. Yeah. For, had an from, inhaler. <laughs> Please don't tell me. <laughs> and then from from then on, I was off my phone for 24 hours, like okay. because I was I wasn't gonna be able to watch it till the next day at seven o'clock or mm-hmm. whatever it was. And yeah. it's, un- it's unfortunate that it has to go to that level where it's like, I can't interact with my friends for a day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I cause you can't, you don't know the potential. Yeah. But what do you love more? Your friends or the show? You know, <laughs> you got to figure it out. Yeah. So, you know, I, I guess I couldn't creep on anybody's pictures on Instagram. I couldn't, you couldn't do anything. I couldn't like <laughs> no, no. photos. Um, so, so, but I see where you're coming from. And actually I really understand it. That's like really fucked up. Yeah. That but, is fucked up and it's not fair. That's what it is. It's not fair. You know, four person anyways, just, rest in peace, Rick Grimes, right? I'm just... Rest in peace, <laughs> Let, But overall, I want to just have a closing thing that, you know, everything's been subdued. Mm-hmm. My anger and everything. I saw, I saw the uh, show. And what I really want to bring to the attention of the audience is that a lesson has been learned. Mm-hmm. To never go on social media for something that has so much importance to you. Period. When it's a show. Yeah. You wait. You wait before you go back on social media. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You watch your show however you can get to it and then go back to social media. Exactly. But the way it was spoiled was that was even unreal. in your head? Was that in your head? Did you, did you remember about the show at that moment? Uh when I was cuz I knew Sunday was going to be the it's, premiere. Well, yeah, I, like I knew it, but it completely slipped my mind. And then like right right before you yeah. got on, I was getting on my phone. Yeah, but like I mentioned to you, this is six o'clock. I exactly. know I know I'm not in the danger zone on the West Coast. Yeah. So I think I'm free from that, but wrong, wrong, <laughs> wrong. <laughs> but anyway, let's talk about the journey that we had beforehand. <clears throat> All right. Slick, you and I went to Portland, Oregon for four four luscious days. <laughs> Delicious. 
Dude, scrumptious. Driving there fucking sucks. <laughs> right? Dude, you have to go through the grapevine, you have to pass Sacramento, you have to pass San Fran. Not literally, but mm-hmm. Sacramento you go through. But San mm-hmm. Fran you see on the uh, on the on the coast side. But well, the places you have to lock your doors, it's it's a little yeah, it's a little, this little, little torn down. <laughs> a little, huh. just, just guys outside with chainsaws, yeah. like <laughs> pretty much. Dude. <laughs> As you drive down, um, a lot of a lot of meth ridden areas. You can mm-hmm. just just and then you know you have to get gas eventually, right? So yeah, it's like yeah. you're filling up. And they and they and once you get to Oregon, they have to fill up for you. I don't know if you know yeah. this. Oh wow, there's they, a <laughs> let him let him what? Yeah, yeah. like a. Like, for example, the first time I went to Oregon, there was a guy just uh, standing there, and I was, like, trying to walk around and putting, trying to put my card in the in the machine, and the guy just had his hand out, and I was like, I don't have anything, dude, I'm sorry. Like, yeah. I'm thinking he's asking for money, and he's right. like, he's like, no, I have to pump your gas. I was like, oh, I'll go inside. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I didn't know. I was like, I'm not just going to give you my card, but that's just, that's life over there, dude. It's that's, that's something I still can't get over. It was weird, huh? Like, I really can't get over the fact that, like, some transient... <laughs> you no, know, because this guy is a hired on transient. Like Pretty much. any which gas station, you know, there might be a a good civil civil employee somewhere, but mm. the majority of them, the, these guys know. woke up out of their shanty and just yeah. came out to get like two dollars an hour, basically. Whatever they make out there, like, a dollar a pump. Yeah. <laughs> well, wow. what, 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 <laughs> I love that. So let's I'll backtrack. Let's pump, backtrack. <laughs> the, the drive itself. So you guys, you know, cross through all these different places. Yeah. It was just. Endless. Long. Endless. It's just long. Like, you just felt like you... Yeah. Are we even close? I remember... Yeah. I remember... All right. We... What time did we leave at? Fucking four? four. Okay. I made sure of that. Well, you picked me up like around three or so. Mm-hmm. By the time we picked up everybody and we're on the road, mm-hmm. four o'clock. Yeah. So I, I remember like... It felt like at least seven hours went by. I look at the clock and it was like three hours. And I was like, Jesus <laughs> no. Christ. Dude. Yeah, dude. And I wasn't driving. This guy was driving. at You know? So I was like, ugh. Oh. It just... <laughs> it's just that's a bad sign at the very yeah. beginning of the trip like what yeah I try yeah. to take advantage as much as I can because I know on the grapevine during the middle of the middle of the night mm-hmm. no one there's gonna be no CHPs are around right so I'm going like 80 in this big long transit van that we rented mm-hmm. and this thing hauls ass mm-hmm. um, especially with the cargo that we had right but man no matter how fast I went I felt like I felt like it was endless mm-hmm. and then <laughs> we we end up doing a little switch and then that got long too but man it was going up that going up that journey towards portland isn't as bad as coming down okay because near the end of the uh, road to portland when you get there it's like straight up wilderness like bigfoot territory oh like, snap. And that's actually where they where they first found bigfoot yeah where, where that footage came from okay, that, okay. That, what is it the patterson footage mm-hmm. so you, there's long windy roads mm-hmm. and it's like this stuff you can't really you can't really go 75 and mm-hmm. handle those turns, right. especially with the big van. So right. slow and steady we went through that, through the canyons, mm-hmm. through the hills and stuff. But when we get there, completely the air just got sucked out. We're in the we're in the city, mm-hmm. and then that fucking sucks <laughs> because then this is one way streets. They're like telling me like, oh, you should have turned here. It's like motherfucker, I do not know where I'm going. <laughs> like, don't no, I, I wasn't. This saying is my anything. first. Oh no, 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 exactly. Was, but it's laughing. just like, put the gun down. Please. It's just like, <laughs> turn here, turn here. Like everyone, <laughs> and I'm like, fuck, I don't even know where I'm going. Like, right. let's let me get the navigation going because if I have the navigation, I'll know where to turn. Well, so it's similar to Utah. Exactly, but, just... but more congested. Oh wow. Yeah, because because Utah is a little more spread out. It is more spread out. Like the roads are huge. This is a place I was I've been dying to go since 2012 ever since the whole Portlandia bullshit. I love Portlandia. But dude, what I can tell you from Portland, especially since we're since we got there near in the night, pizza, <laughs> New York style pizza is delicious there. They have water. They have actual water dispensers wherever you want to go. Mm-hmm. Like what? every every place has like a water dispenser for you to put water in. And they don't give a fuck. What? Like you? Oh, I bet you someone could go in with like a canteen for a water and just fill up mm-hmm. and just be good. And yeah. some might be there ready to high five them. The homeless, they accept the homeless there. What? That's crazy. And the homeless are down to Dude, be homeless. We're going. There's this ramp that we went to go to <laughs> Fudu Donuts and p- picture an on ramp going onto a street <laughs> from a freeway. Mm-hmm. So you know that curve that goes uphill. Yeah. Picture that curve. The grassy <laughs> knoll on that curve is full of fucking shanties. What? <laughs> Dude, that's cool for them. And they're you just know? like kicking it. Exactly. Yeah. But, but a bunch of tents, a bunch of homeless people there. Mm. 
Who knows what they're doing in there? But what I could tell you, fucking the drugs, fucking the drugs. <laughs> sure. What I could tell you, like what me and uh, what me and Slick were talking about, is like what happens when some dude just fucking careens off of the road and just hits that pile. That's over. A, you that's know, a, yeah, that's a Grand Theft Auto type of thing. Like exactly, man. Like, but I understand, like dude, you know, a to, lot of. I'm sorry to cut you off, but there's a. We're talking. Sidewalks. You did cut me off. There's sidewalks being occupied. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. With homeless people. Yeah. Tense. Did, this is a serious question. Did that affect the smell of the environment? Was it kind of run down? Not really? Because mm-hmm. I see, like, in my mind, I see Portland as a, uh, there's a green hue for some reason. Mm-hmm. And everything just seems to be kind of uh, chill, yeah. lax. And the aroma of marijuana <laughs> wafts through the air. Yeah. There's a nice, uh, what's what, what's that, that filter that... That sepia? It's yeah. A, it's a nice, <laughs> the sepia filter? Yeah. Once, you, once you pass Oregon, it immediately goes into sepia. <laughs> <laughs> That's why everyone's photos in Portland are so nice. Yeah, dude. So it's beautiful in the city itself. Yes. I, I would say this. I'm not trying to trash the homeless completely. Mm-hmm. They've done that themselves. But <laughs> the uh, what I can tell you is that everything is everything is well kept. Okay. Everything is like they, can, they kept their... They're organized tents, very organized. Okay. Like, you know, it's <laughs> not... a lot of order in the yeah. homeless world. Exactly. They're not, like, all their the crap's not all everywhere. Mm-hmm. But everything was well kept. Everything okay, so was they're within sleeping, the confines. They're vacuuming the tents. I can't, yeah, I can't promise that. <laughs> but everything was well kept within the confines of their tents. Okay. Yeah. And it, uh, these shops and all this other stuff, like, is it... I, I, my brain I, is like I, I imagine this weird mecca, which doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. So you have to kind of ground me. Give okay, me a reality so, here. So the there's still Starbucks, mm-hmm. but the, a lot of them. Yeah, but the like if every you, corner if kind you, of situation. Okay. If you grab a cup of Joe from an individual place, like the Pine Street Biscuit Joint that you and I went to, their coffee is a lot more uh, has a bit like a bitter aftertaste, but the coffee's good. Okay. Like, it's a different taste for me, mm-hmm. you know, because... It's that indie taste. Mm-hmm. I know, exactly. It's, it's authentic, This is man. fair trade Amer- <laughs> Arabica beans, bro. We're giving you the real thing, man. Clean bean, bro. It's good. <laughs> Clean bean. <I> just- <laughs> this guy, Billy, in the back, he hand washes every bean. <laughs> or a big toothbrush. One by one. He stirs <laughs> it with his dreads. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tons of dreads there, Tons too. of dreads. So... Judge Dread. Judge Dredd. That was just about to say. <laughs> Well, one thing I could tell people that from California that want to go to Portland is for the love of your sanity, for the love of you not getting cabin fever, grab yourself a flight there to and back. Because it's just – it's a two-hour flight there yeah, and two hours back mm-hmm. versus – what was it, 18? Hours 18, driving. 20 it's a lot more hours, expensive yeah. though, man. For yeah. the trip of one person flying is the like the amount of gas, dude. But you're, you know what I mean? Man, you're – Paying for comfort. Yeah, yeah, man. no, it's no. Just, it's, it's, it, I mean, it's. I, yeah, I, if you I, have I, the money for sure. Yeah, that yeah. can weigh out. But a couple, you know, want to get a ways to and fro. You know what I'm saying? Okay, Going so, back. So one more question, because mm-hmm. you know, you guys had the Portland experience. Yeah. Um, the actual like the food. How's the food? I mean, Ooh. you said pizza spots or whatever. Pizza but spot like, was good, dude. Pine Street, uh, Pine Street biscuits. Mm-hmm. Pine State, I think. Pine mm-hmm. State. I think I graduated from Pine State. <laughs> Pine State University. The <laughs> biscuit making. I think that's that's funny. That's the funny part too. You think you yeah. don't even know where you graduated. There's a yeah. possibility. I don't know my, where it was. My early twenties were quite a blur. <laughs> the the biscuits were great, dude. Mm-hmm. I had one. I had with flank steak. The next day, I had it with sausage and uh, with uh, sausage egg and cheese. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't have the flank steak again. Like I, 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 ne- I don't usually eat breakfast foods in the morning because mm-hmm. of my diet. But oh my goodness, dude! When I just had the egg and cheese biscuit, <laughs> delicious. I hate whistling on the on the podcast. By the way, <laughs> damn somebody dude. that was listening. Oh my god, <laughs> listen all loud. Ah, somebody that listens with a surround sound stereo system. The, is fucked the, right now. I'm telling you, like I, I can promise you that those biscuits were made that day. Mm-hmm. That egg was made to order. Hand grown biscuits. I can't promise. (laughs) But I can't promise for the flank steak because the flank steak takes a little minute to cook, and I think the sausage does too. Mm -hmm. But the egg and cheese, I mean, it's just made to order. Not the cheese specifically, but what was that joint with the donuts that like had like what was it? They 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 had donuts, but they they made miniature donuts on top of the donuts as sprinkles or something. It's quirky. It's Portland. (laughs) I had the glazed donut with the Dreamcatcher on top of it. The dream, with the Dreamcast? <laughs> the Dreamcast? <laughs> Voodoo Game and Donuts? Hey, can I have the memory card with glaze, please? 
<laughs> the memory card uh, chocolate bar. There's like three three PlayStation Two memory cards on a fucking chocolate bar. <laughs> that place was quirky, slick. You didn't tell me about this. How come you don't tell me these things when we go there? Because I wanted to surprise you, man. I care about you. Oh. I will, I want you to see the the shirt on the wall that said Schmegma. I want you to see that. <laughs> the LP. Oh, yeah, it was LP. Yeah, yeah, there it is. But it's Dude, that place is that was a quirky little donut place. Mm-hmm. And that's that's like. Anytime somebody's going to Portland, they're like, you got to get me a donut from Voodoo Donuts. I tried to bring a box home one time. They it just they were all melted when I got home. Yeah. <laughs> they were terrible. <laughs> they it was a mess. Their lifespan just doesn't, it doesn't last long enough they, to get to people. I saw the array of donuts that they had, dude. They had like bacon on top of a maple bar, mm-hmm. which oh, my friend Alex said it was very delicious. And there was ones with, you know, fruit, uh, fruit loops. That's the one I got, the fruit loops. There was also... Oh, uh, William got plain glaze. <laughs> yeah, he, was a hoot of he, was, he was like all amazed, and he was like, I'm, "I'm just going with the glaze." Yo, let me get a glaze and a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I got a chocolate bar, but this chocolate bar had a pizza, on dude, it? Yeah, like actual chocolate. Like it wasn't like cheap little like Mrs. Kim's donuts. Mrs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Down the block, but this is some real deal Holyfield donuts. <laughs> Don't talk about my exit donut place, dog. <laughs> Can't give her advertisement. Yeah, the. Everyone there is extremely polite. I'll tell you this right now. I'm trying to merge into the lane. Uh-huh. A lady stops traffic behind her, slows her cars, slows her car down for me to get into the lane. It <laughs> impedes traffic yeah. for me to get in there. And then and everyone I'm, behind her were like, good job. Thanks, yeah. miss. Like, no one was Oh, pissed. I guess she's letting someone in. Like, these guys are too nice out there, man. I couldn't get used to it. Why? He was getting mad that people were being nice to him. It was See, hilarious. See, that's, that's the California mentality. Yeah. You need aggression and anger yeah, to survive. <laughs> it's dangerous to slow traffic, though. Like, behind Not you. in Portland. Portland doesn't no. give a fuck, obviously. I don't know, man. It's, hey, it's cool, man. Get in my lane. Dude, I'm trying to... <laughs> I'm trying to roll it anyway. I'm trying to roll up another one right now. <laughs> Everyone's super friendly. Customer Customer service is excellent. Okay. I didn't have a bad experience with anybody there. Okay. Um, they probably had a bad experience with us because we were really loud and obnoxious. Yeah. But oh, you were just like breaking the structure of Portland. They are like, oh, yeah. they shun the outsiders. <laughs> Put the board them up. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, it, but it was, I can tell you one thing to sum it, to sum it all up on that regard. It's quirky. Everyone's quirky. quirky. Everyone has boots and dreads and mm-hmm. it's something, it's a different <laughs> animal. Oh no, they do because it, it the rains whole place is, on the regular. Bright pink. Oh, okay. Okay. The whole place is bright pink. It's yeah. A, yeah. There's a donut that's shaped like a, like a little man and there's like a pretzel in his heart. What like, the heck? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I remember that donut. Yeah. What is... Oh, man. I want to go. I really do. Oh, yeah. So, do you... I mean, if this was a review of Portland, uh, would you recommend people to go? I would. I would say it's... A, it's. I, I, I love it over there. Like the, Would you want to explore more? Absolutely. Yes. It's, I was there more more on the lines of, uh, along the lines of uh, work, mm-hmm. I would say. Mm-hmm. But for the experience I had outside during my free time, it was great. Wow. There was the, the Dutch Brothers Coffee place... Dude, that Dutch I'm, Brothers coffee. I'm mad that we didn't go sooner. Like, we, yeah. we passed 50 of them. <laughs> we got the worst one. We got some one guy listening to Bob Marley at like 3 in the morning or 2 in the morning. And hey, it was man, delicious. And it was delicious, dude. Sha, <laughs> man. What you need? <laughs> Boca Toco Froco, bro. <laughs> A broca toco, a broca, a bro, a bro pacino, a bro al pacino. <laughs> what do you need, bro? That dude hooked my drink up, though. Dude, dude that shit was. I was bomb. I was live for a couple more hours, man. But the drive home sucked too because I was timing out big time, dude. Oh like, yeah, so you were I was up, on like, all sti- day. I was on five hours. And I what 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 time we woke up? We never took a nap. We, we, we oh from, yeah yeah yeah. From That's Sunday true. at the retro game convention. What time we wake up at six thirty? To, to head out so we get there at what eight or whatever nine something like that yeah. damn and then and then uh, we get I know and from then on we're working oh yeah which and is- after that we have to load up and then we jetted straight back we couldn't I couldn't we couldn't chill at the, any hotel because I had to turn in the rental on, on Monday oh so man. I told people I was like we gotta go like straight home. So we got home after all the changes and stuff because I, I knocked out and Slick had to drive and and then I had to drive again. We got there at like 2 and then I still had to drop off all the stuff. Oh Dude, it got – so as soon as I got home, I was like, ew. <laughs> I was done. Overall, I want to say that Portland is 
is really nice to go if you're just going there for the sake of vacation. Mm-hmm. Don't be don't be too occupied with anything else. Mm-hmm. You have to immerse yourself in the environment. Um, you know, whoever you know, everyone's vice is there. I mean, you can smoke marijuana recreationally if you mm-hmm. that's your flavor. Mm-hmm. Um, the beer there is really good. The ciders are good. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can play several games while you're on the way over there, or while you're around town. <laughs> count the dreadlocks. Count the, <laughs> count the dream catchers. <laughs> Count the dispensaries. Count the beautiful hipster women. Oh yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of good talent there. There was too. a lot of cardigans. There was a lot of glasses, beanies, beanies. Oh, they were all there, dude. Oh man, yeah, I would definitely fit in there. <laughs> I oh. love that place. Oh, I, love it. I <laughs> you, want to be there. Beanies, you, you sold me, man. <laughs> and as far as the SoCal Retro Game Expo, that place was intense. I, I, any place that I could find a bunch of laser disc and a great laser disc player, Mm-mm. I'm in. And it, the event itself was great. A lot of people present. I have never seen so many YouTube personalities in my whole life. Yeah. Just, Damn. Dude, I met, uh, I don't know if I told you, but I met Peanut Butter Gamer. Wait, you did. Oh, okay. Not tell me that. Oh, okay. I'm really glad you did. <laughs> I met him, The this other guy, Satchback Goods. He mm-hmm. did. Uh, he does actually good stuff for uh, a Mega Man X review he did. But then he, I guess he stopped doing YouTube. But then I met uh, Pro Jared, mm-hmm. um, Metal Jesus Rocks. Mm-hmm. I'm trying not to make fun of that guy's name. <laughs> I met John John Riggs, and he actually gave me advice on what to do with segments and stuff. So, okay, okay. which is totally not working today, by the way. <laughs> I'm just kidding, just joking. And uh, the but, completionist, right? Was he there? Yeah, he was there, but it's like he he's not my cup of tea. His videos are my cup of tea, but meeting him in person, I you know I it was good I'll to meet. Like, him what once. are you going to say? I want to hear. Good like, to meet him once. <laughs> I'll oh, tell you that. Okay, okay. Pat, I saw again, and there was a couple of here and there, but. Um, this guy saw James Rolfe. He met uh, the video game nerd. It was, it was a it was a mission though to meet him. Oh yeah, <laughs> but when you did, it was like, oh, can dude, I take was... a picture? With you? Did you dig in his pockets? What did he have in there? Oh, big ass dick. That's what he. Had. <laughs> <laughs> dude, you're rocking, James. <laughs> like, you're all impressed. For those people that want to know if James Rolfe has a big penis, you got it. You got the answer right here. You got to hear a live show. Effects. Confirmed. Confirmed. We we we, we had, had our man Slick get in there. <laughs> check and see. A guy named Slick digs in there. <laughs> The Game Video Games Nerd's Pants. I wish I would have met him, but I already knew the line for him was crazy. He, it, is, it he was, is the messiah of retro game Because the, the, the line started pretty much after the convention, right? After the... What did it end? At 5 or something? Yeah. And, and they were like, alright, well, the line started or whatever. But we're working, mm-hmm. so we have to still do stuff or whatever. By the time I get out there, the line is around the whole convention, and... The convention's big. It's huge, yeah. dude. So it's like just to meet him, to meet him for a picture. For if you have to like, get if you could pull it off quick enough. Yeah. So that's what it was. Just you met him. Like, what Basically. was your time frame with him? Like about thirty seconds. What? Well, well, all right. I'm literally at the end of the line. Well, okay. Here's what happened. Okay. The lines. It's over. You're the ridiculous. last. And I'm and I'm heartbroken, dude, because I really want to meet this guy. Like I, I love this guy's videos. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like he he actually inspired me to do a lot of a lot of things. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So. I, gi- I give up instantly. I'm like, nope, screw that, dude. Whatever. So we go eat at, at Boygaville. This, this is a Boy- great Boygaville. story. I was all expecting like this. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I give up immediately. Yeah. No, I, <laughs> the I plot give- twist already at the beginning. I give up immediately. Right. You know? Because I because we walk around and it just keeps seeing more line. And there's a part where it looks like it breaks, but it broke because... Because um, a person died of like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like thirst waiting. No, like, we're, to- we're literally about to cut into a bunch of people because we think... That's where the line ends, but we see that it, there's just a bunch of doors, and and they're trying not to block the doors. Yeah. I was like, oh man, so that that was another heartbreaker right there. So I was like, yeah, we gave up instantly. So, yeah. so we go eat at Boygaville. Yeah. So we're there for a while and just hanging out, and then um, very good Boygas by the way. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> the, the burgers at Boygaville, delicious. So then uh, we go back because because um, Will was about to hit the the, the auction. The auction. Yeah. Okay. So, I, yeah, we're going to just go hang out in there with him. And then I'm like, well, let me go check out this line again. You know what I mean? So it's, it's still a decent line, a bit, but it's like, well, I'm just going to get in line, you know? So I go get in line, and and I'm standing there for a few minutes, and then uh, the girl in front of me, she's like, they told me that I'm the last one in line. I mean... She didn't sound like that. She's like, she didn't tell me you got... Wait, how does she... Wait, what did she <laughs> say so I can say it? I don't know. Uh, she, Get the fuck away! This is the end of the fucking line, Slick. No, she, how do I know your name is Slick? I don't know. <laughs> you look like a Slick. 
<laughs> you look like Slick. <laughs> she was a customer, dude. She was a nice girl. She Good. wasn't okay. So she she didn't sound like an asshole like you, right? <laughs> <laughs> So she just told me, she's like, oh, they had just told me, like, I'm the last one. I don't know if they're going to give you, tell you anything or whatever. And I was like, well, whatever. We'll wait in line, you know? I couldn't, I couldn't see. We'll wait in line. And you held her hand? Yeah. No, yeah, you put on the charm, obviously. <laughs> oh, you got I, dude, you don't know me, dude. I've, <laughs> well, was she, like bro. a 10, an 8? She's a solid 7. She's a high 7. That's a lucky number, man. She was wearing a Ninja Turtles backpack, bro. <laughs> eight. Jump to 8. She was wearing glasses, bro. Jump to she, 9. <laughs> yeah, anyone with the ten inch mean Ninja Turtles backpack. <laughs> Leo Hardo tattooed on her arm. Leo <laughs> the so, so this girl's telling you that you might not get a chance yeah. to see, see yeah, him. She's, How'd she's, you feel? Well, she she tells me that, and and like I said, she didn't work for anybody. She was just standing in line, and so I, I tell her I'm like, oh, it's cool. Because in my mind, I'm like. James isn't going to see me and be like, oh, fuck you. See you later. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? Uh, one more guy? Yeah. Seriously? Exactly. That's, that was my thought process. I'm Who like, the fuck is him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd that be right there? I declare that she is the last person. <laughs> Damn. Get this scum out of my face. Every, but the workers, yeah. that's how they were talking to me. Okay. That's how they, they were. Like a few minutes later, some guy comes up and he's like, well, she's the end of the line. So pretty much, you know, she's the end. And I'm like, well, I'm just going to wait here. I'm, t- I'm telling him, I'm just going to wait here, you know? So it's. I'm telling him, like, don't worry about it. I'm going to wait here. Right. Yeah. And he's trying to, like, kind of hint, like, get out of here. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, whatever, dude. And, like, I'm ignoring him. And he's kind of, after a while, just kind of being a dick. Finding new tactics, yeah. you know, so like, then, pulling a gun out. Like, I'm, I'm just trying to let you know. <laughs> it's pretty much what it is. <laughs> so then I see other people, like, trying to get in line. And he's telling them to leave. And I'm telling them, don't don't listen to him. He's a Nazi. I'm telling him to get in line with <laughs> me. Oh, like, oh, snap. I'm starting to revolt. <laughs> because he was pissing me off, dude. Right. And I'm just like, screw this guy. Yeah. So he gets some other dude. And then tell some other lady. So they they keep they're doing the same thing. Like, like this. She's the end of the line. You, so just letting you know you're not gonna meet him. They're at that point they're just straight telling me like you're not gonna meet him. Like, mm-hmm. and I'm getting pissed off because they're just yeah being, they're, they're stealing down to, to my boy here. Yeah, right. I right. hate that. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> People, to whoever was working that joint at the Portland Retro Game Expo, and we know you're listening. I'll let my boy Slick <laughs> finish off the conclusion of what happened because. Apparently, they were telling you that you're not going to see him. They, they, at, at that point, they straight up told me, like, you're not going to meet him. Like, she's in the line, whatever. I stayed there. I was like, screw you, dude. Mm-hmm. So, we, we find, at, at that point, the f- last few people, they were just telling him, basically, like, shake his hand and walk away. Mm-hmm. They, they weren't even giving him time with him anymore. Right. So, so I, I get to him. And, and sure enough, he, he looks behind me, and there's, like, four people. And, and they're telling him, well, she's in the line. And he looks over, and he's like, no, it's cool. Don't worry about it. <laughs> like... Exactly, yeah. right. exactly how I think a, James would do, dude. A class act. He was like, oh, that's cool. No worries. You know what I mean? Took a picture of me with a big smile. No, no, like, oh. No fatigue. Not yeah. a celebrity at airport. No. Nice. Yeah. Took, took a picture of me. Yeah. Shook my hand. Uh, talked to me for like a quick second. And, and then the guy that was giving me shit. He was even telling me, "Oh, thank you very much." And all I could, yeah, all, all I thought God. to do was like finish flip, him, right? All I thought Ooh. to do was flip him off and tell him, "Fuck you!" And I walked Let's away. Like, Stone Cold Stunner. I wanted to. Ba-na-ba-ba-na. If you guys want to see me kick this fucking girl <laughs> in the retro game expo, employee's hand, Ash, give me a hell yeah! Then smash two beers over your fucking <laughs> and head, and then you and James fucking drink them, and then and I'm like, "Slick, slick, wake up, bro, <laughs> dude! You passed out before you met James. <laughs> <laughs> he left. He walked right over you, man. <laughs> he pissed on you and walked." <laughs> he said, "Is this the restroom it looks like?" And I took a piss on him. That's wow, actually a dude, crazy I am story. so glad you met him. So, yeah, I'm glad really someone, yeah, the, someone. The end of that him. was I shook James' hand, flipped that dude off, and walked off. And with and I was stoked. And Beautiful. got a picture. I got a I got a great picture. See, a little blurry, but it was. Fuck dude, man, whatever. I'm happy. We, I, I, we could digitally alter yeah. that later. I, I'm happy to that. That it, it it did it for me. Dude. My the highlight with. That I had was I had an hour to kill on Sunday. We set up anticipating that I was going to open at nine for an early oh, bird, that's right. yeah. and we were wrong. So we had another hour, dude. I was in that pinball thing for the longest time, <laughs> dude. I was on the the Royal Rumble pinball machine, the Star Wars pinball. So it was just a whole room full of pinball. Yeah, machines. yeah. But this is the chance I had to capitalize on because when the doors open, dude, those are, you will never get the chance to play those arcades mm-hmm. because there's unlimited credits and people will be dicks mm-hmm. and not give up. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, only when you have the appropriate games, I guess. Mm-hmm. Like, a group of kids will play X-Men till they all beat it. Right. And not get off. Mm-hmm. Right. 
And it's understandable because you got a bunch of credits. Right, and you want to win. Yeah, but yeah. it's X Men. But uh, the the arcade setup was so awesome. I took so I took more pictures than I played the games just <laughs> because it was just it was so great to see something that looked like an arcade. Right, awesome. because awesome. they're dead. We only got a chance to see arcades till we were like six or seven. True. And those sad excuses for GameWorks and and Dave and Buster's they yeah. do it for us for now. But it's like no, you know, the, the, it's I can only like, play Crazy Taxi so long, dude. You know before, I mean? Yeah, we need something else, right? Dude, like, crazy, taxi, t- crazy Taxi came out so long ago, and that's still their new game. Right. Whoa, ho, put it in a new credit, dude. Take, <laughs> take it to the KFC. <laughs> crazy Taxi. Great. Here's crazy another taxi. track from Sum 41. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, man. Like, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> it's so sad. <laughs> is this the Tony Hawk soundtrack, or is this Crazy Taxi? <laughs> we'll let you guess. <laughs> do, 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 no do, black to the taxis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, it's, uh, it, it is weird that arcade culture is completely completely over exactly right? so you got to like kind of relive it for a second the fact that pinball machines are present dude that's pretty that nuts. wrestling pinball oh, the great, Royal dude. Rumble one was tight dude what? trust me like every time every time you hit a bumper at the like, rock bottom no no this was uh this is uh, uh before Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels this is uh, oh, okay. this is uh, uh, an original oh, yeah this dude. is Hogan and Ultimate Warrior and all that so every time you hit a pinball oh yeah <laughs> take it to the top <laughs> like dude fucking <laughs> macho man like rest in peace it was man legit. super legit and then Oh, Hogan songs in there. It's just really cool. the The environment was good at the Portland Retro Game Expo. I'm sorry to hear that slick. You had an unfortunate um, incident with a with an empl- with a volunteer there. Yeah, volunteers. But I can tell no, that you that was the owner. Oh, the 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 last dude that was oh, Ricky Retro. <laughs> <laughs> Philly Portland Retro Game Expo guy. No, from what I was told, somebody somebody said it like, "Oh, that's the dude that runs the place." Oh shit! Oh man! Because at first they were like the rent a cop dudes, and then and then the last one it was super legit dude. Like, it's like come on, like, like, like a in a suit. suit. I'm yeah. in a suit, and I need to inform you that you are not going to be the last person. Oh yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, you, yeah. Okay. Well, we also want to let you guys know that the thoughts and opinions expressed on this podcast have no reflection on Game Swappers whatsoever. Hmm. Just to give a quick PSA because we just trashed the Portland Retro Game Expo. <laughs> no, I think the Portland, you know. No, but no, I, our was, thoughts, was, but this is just our opinion. Okay, okay. Yeah. I yeah, just want to let you know that it has the no. Ex- the Expo is perfect, dude. Exactly. Like, we just I, had an unfortunate. I, he was just, it was unnecessary the way they were interacting with me. You okay. know what I mean? And. Which is understandable, though. You know, we dude, can't I'm have, a, I'm a, we can't have another 20 people, you know, after James has possibly seen up to a. You know, 500 people. It's and it wasn't even attached. 20, dude. It was four people, dude. Right. It was four people. And, like, I understand, but, like, I, I, I was even trying to talk to them, like, dude, I've been working all day, like... I'm working I'm, at I'm, this expo. Uh, yeah. And yeah. I'm like, dude, just hear be, me be out. cool, dude. Just hear me out. Let me just and, dig in his and, pocket and see what the size of his dick is, right? And, and you know, it happened, but... <laughs> <laughs> it worked out for everyone. It's a win-win for all of us. It's a win-win for all of us. And then you get to flip them. This I think works for both of us. That bold moment of flipping <laughs> off... Uh, you know, a, a it, I mean, and in, in theory, or not in theory, like in, in retrospect, retrospect. Oh, nice! Was, I see it, what you did there. In retro respect, <laughs> you know, it was maybe you know it wasn't the right thing for me to do. Like I, I'm, I'm a pretty nice guy, dude. Yeah. You know what I mean, and but sometimes something injustice needs to after be understand. Oh, after understanding your circumstances where you were actually working, mm-hmm. it becomes understandable. Yeah, it's you like, know, it's like come on, dude. I was working. Like, we gave you money to yeah. be here. If like You were just some jamoke that just like, hey, hey, oh, hey let me go see uh, James. Yeah, and, and, and I, was, I, was ta- <laughs> I was talking to this dude like, dude, hear me out. Like, n- wanted nothing to do with me. They weren't listening to anything. Yeah, man. And I was like, well, I'm just going to stand in line. And I just kept, I don't know. And I'm glad I did that, though. But whatever. <laughs> and, and, and it worked out, man. I think that was that's an awesome story, too. You have a cool story at the end of the yeah. day. That's cool, man. To me, James, I wanted to uh, the meet class act, dude. James and Mike at yeah, the same time. I was hoping I would Michael was like, in the middle, dude. I would have fangirled out. But me understanding this, uh, what was the momentum behind AVGN being there mm-hmm. the first time, mm-hmm. dude, there was no chance. Yeah, it was... It was a risk he took, and he, you know, he he got a seven on the dice roll. You know That's what I'm saying, dope, man? And, and honestly, you know, you've you've seen him in person now. Yeah, it's always that weird transition to real life. Did he yeah. look totally different from what you see? No, him like? he he made the face that he does on the show, dude. <laughs> like, damn, like. It, I don't know. It was I know, just, it's because when you meet a person that you've seen yeah, through yeah, camera it's, it's, for a long time, you're like, what the hell? It's just different. Like, these are right here. They're easier to recognize in the real world. Too. Right, right. I remember. Uh, I was walking through Disneyland and I saw the chick that played Catwoman on Gotham. Mm-hmm. And I was like, 
<laughs> Where do I know this chick from? Mm-hmm. Like, how, how? Why do I know her? Like, why is familiarity? That, yeah, and then um, I was told that that was uh, the chick who plays Catwoman on Gotham. I was like, oh, that's her. She's nice. Got you know, it's number. like crazy that you get the eyes like that. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. I'm pro- man, that's, that's good though because AVG oh. is fucking dope. Yeah, he's, he's a, he. I'm and just saying he's a class act. Dude. There was there was no. I forgot a letter. There was no like um, I'm tired. All right, see you guys later. It was like. Big smile still, like yeah, right. James Rolf, I'm a big fan. <laughs> hey, on episode 38, you <laughs> clearly said that the Super Nintendo can play Nintendo games. You're incorrect. correct. <laughs> Imagine you just go there to fucking roast on it, like give a fucking editorial on a show. I have a uh, series of notes here, and then you need to look. And I will not leave until I declare my my perspective. <laughs> they probably looked at me, and they're, they're probably like. Get this guy out of here. They, that's probably what they thought was going to happen, you know? Yeah. Was like, they thought you were, like, kind of dangerous after yeah, this a while. Yeah, this guy's a trash bag. Get him out of here, dude. <laughs> oh, this guy's clown shoes. Bag. Well, there you had a jean jacket on. I did. <laughs> They're like, get this shanty out of here. You had a jean jacket on in Portland. <laughs> and get Bruce still- Springsteen out of here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you ain't the boss here. I'm not Bruce Springsteen. That's a good jacket, though. You got you to gotta give me the credit <laughs> on hey, that. Hey, Disco Stu, you should get that jacket. <laughs> Disco so, Stu doesn't advertise. Yeah, at the end of the day. I met Expo him, dude. Expo was great. It was, oh, dude, it was fun. Expo I love great. it, dude. That was my second time going. So, I, like, regardless if I went with these guys or not, I was going. Okay. I, I was going to figure out a way. And I, because, well, no, well, number one, last year was great. Just as great. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I was like, I got to experience that again. Number two, James is going to be there. You got to be there. And that's, that's another reason why I was kind of pushing to meet him. Because I was like, I really wanted to meet him. Why am I going to screw this up? This is my one chance right here. You know what I mean? Yeah, so one chance, one to mac shot, him, mac him down. One opportunity, <laughs> mom spaghetti, mom yeah. spaghetti. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Speaking of disco stew, Stewart. Disco Stewart. <laughs> Remember, <laughs> Disco Stu lifts up his fucking shoes, and then Homer's all like, "Hey, uh, you know your shoe, your goldfish in there are dead." He's like, "Yeah." Can't get them out. <laughs> can't goldfish in this fucking platform shoes. Classic. Okay, before we get into the Simpsons discussion with the uh, Simpsons guru here, uh, Slick Nasty. Don't call me that because then I'm going to start getting quizzed and... No, I won't. Yeah, the, the Dude, seasons, me, I, I don't. We have season Simpsons best. Dude, I, yeah. he, he knows more than I do. I, that's not... That's a, that's a given. Before we get into that, let's see what we have in the chat room. We have... Let me see. Were the four people in line behind you Republicans? <laughs> <laughs> Home computer and game systems killed the arcade. Yep, that's yep, right. Definitely. Why watch a video when you can make one? Oregon coastline, I mean. Portland is a potential tsunami hotspot. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Were the crackheads polite? <laughs> Did you see any crazy bicycles? <laughs> nice. Good comments. Thank you Dad. for such wonderful comments. Dad, Dad your one-liners are always awesome. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Before we get into that, uh, before we get into the Simpsons segment, let's do with a quick commercial break with the uh, Street Fighter soundtrack here on the Mark and Andre podcast. Oh, nice. Get, get the pancakes out the oven.
And we're back here on the Mark and Andre podcast show. What were we going to say? I was going to do some ridiculous <laughs> What? I was going to say something ridiculous. What were we going to say? Just a ridiculous fade in. Talking you, about like... So that was the first time I got AIDS. And, and then I stole the... <laughs> just say something ridiculous. And I stole the, the sarcophagus. <laughs> so I says to Mabel, I says, oh, I'll tell I you said, guys I'll later. give you the Declaration of Independence later. Some crazy <laughs> shit. Just like, Whoa. Oh, <laughs> some national treasure type shit. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to the Mark and Andre Show, the only film, entertainment, conspiracy theory podcast on Spreaker.com. To our knowledge. For the... I know, yeah, to our knowledge anyway. <laughs> We're going to be talking about one of the most iconic shows on primetime cable television of the last almost going on 30 years. Best show, in my opinion. One of the best shows, definitely. Um, in some circles, it may be the best. In some circles, someone might say, Friends... Mm-hmm. Is in some circles, some guy, hey man, you, what you know about Seinfeld, B? You know what I mean? Yo, Jerry. You know uh, what I'm saying, son? son? It's, it's always about New Martin. York. It's Martin, B. It's Martin, Martin B. Straight up, B. Cool. <laughs> That's cool, <laughs> but it ain't enough. <laughs> so, <laughs> The Simpsons, guys. Uh, the longest running show in television history. One of the most. I probably see more Simpsons episodes. Than any other show on any other type of program ever. It takes two weeks to watch all the episodes. You know this, right? Yeah. Because if you're talking about continuously. Yeah, continuously. Uninterrupted. Two weeks? Yeah. They had a marathon not too long ago. And they're actually going to do it again. I don't know if you guys know. Who's they? Uh, FX. Oh, FX is. FXX, okay, okay. I believe. Because they do, um, what is it, like five nights a week, they do Simpsons, like a Simpson block for a few hours. That's cool. That's but... But yeah, they've they've done this thing where it's like a, a continuous marathon, day in day out. It's like, that's awesome. Simpsons. Never, dude. If you get home and just turn on the TV and Simpsons is on, it feels good, dude. It just warms your heart. It tickles, Warm, it tickles oh, your bing. Especially it's just, if it's an episode that you like, mm-hmm. dude. It's just like, oh, I remember this one. But that's the thing. Simpsons has a million of those. So it's like, I remember this. This oh, is yeah. great. I used to record two shows religiously on old VHS tapes that I had, blank ones. It was Married with Children and mm-hmm. The Simpsons. Oh, man, I had so many episodes. I had, like, a makeshift season five done <laughs> nice. on one VHS because of the girth of the tape. Yeah, well, you know, girth, yeah. <laughs> well, if it does that for you, you know, some guys, are, you in, some guys are in the length of the tape. If that's what you need to get your Simpsons fixed. <laughs> you you You're trying to make girth. up for it in other places. <laughs> when weird. I was fucking eight, I had to make up for it in other places. <laughs> Dude, it got so bad that one time, there was a time where... Um, where we had to move out of this house, and for a couple of, for like a year and a half, I was result, I was, I was like, taking to like a little black and white TV that only got Fox 11. Mm, nice. And I was just like. Blessed. You were oh, blessed. <laughs> I had to watch PAX. What? You remember that yes. station yes. PAX? Yeah, the most, it was a Christian station, right? It was semi, it had that new spinoff of Cosby. Oh my God. But this yeah. one had, this one was able to get me Fox. Right. So yeah, PAX and Fox. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> especially for just the the Fox. Seeing the Simpsons in black and white really uh, made it a, had a classy it, feel. It, it did, but it's like just it would have like would have worked any other way anyway. Right, right, you know? right. <laughs> it would have been cool to see it like that. Have you seen them in Spanish? It's, it's, no, no, thank you. It's there's good. more jokes. No, just, <laughs> it's just it's a it's a different episode. You just if. Homero? That's a... Uh, Homero? <laughs> <laughs> That's even different. Homero just... <laughs> <laughs> so like, <laughs> hey, yeah. I'm just saying, it's, a, it's a, another experience. Maybe maybe not as okay. good. <laughs> well, I mean, share with us, you know, your... Yeah, your it's just, uh, you know, uh, educate me, because I am... What do you... I mean, I'm out the loop. That's... How am I supposed to do that? Like, what... Oh, uh, you're the Simpsons guru. Hello? Well, what, I'm just throwing random stuff at you? Just no, no, no. Well, what it is, it's that... What... Let's start from the beginning here. Mm-hmm. Slick. Yeah. How do you spell The Simpsons? Stupid. <laughs> so, okay, if I was... Okay, let's do this. We'll do a quick little whip around. Yeah. So, so name three episodes off the top right now that you've recently saw that just... Man, that's rough, dude. There's so many good ones. Uh, the Most impactful. Three. Most impactful? Mm-hmm. You changed the whole context. Yeah. His the... eyes rolled in a totally different direction. I <laughs> well, I mean... Impact like his eyes are like 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 <laughs> change, it, change my life kind of touch, situation. Touch your heart. He's shaking. It's rough, dude. That's rough. 
Because, all right. All right, any three. All right, well, uh, when they go to Japan, that's like, I think, like, <laughs> season nine with yeah, Mr. With... Mr. Sparkle. Yeah. Mr. Sparkle! <laughs> There's awesome just some power. The thing is, there's just a lot. Like of... they watch the cartoon and it like gives them seizures. No. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's the one. But then the the mascot of Mr. Sparkle looks dead on like Homer. Yeah, <laughs> it, they, they it's, a, up... it's a light bulb and a fish fish bulb. <laughs> yeah. See, that's <laughs> the two companies merged to make Mr. Sparkle. Yeah. See, that's just that's just good writing right there. Yeah. <laughs> the soundtrack. Is... I remember I had the Simsonic soundtrack, mm-hmm. dude. I used to love singing those songs, dude. Those, those. Well, as soon as I got that CD, I probably, I probably had it so like out and about everywhere. It's like got thrashed, just because of you just, know all the places I would play it in. Yeah, I I don't know if it was last year or the year, year before. I um, I went to this this show at the Hollywood Bowl. Oh, where John this is John Williams? Oh no, not, uh, was Conan O'Brien was there too. Conan right? O'Brien was there. Yeah, he yeah. he actually did uh the. The the monorail song. Yeah. It was that I got teared up right there, dude. It Aww. was it was too good. I was literally like the last seat in the yeah. at the top of the Hollywood bowl, you know. You're touching but, the top of the bowl. Yeah, like, hey, hey, clean the bowl while you're up there. There's no <laughs> so bowl. The t- There's no ceiling, it's outside, guys. <laughs> well, it's a, well when I'm here in Hollywood Bowl, yeah, yeah it's a, the, the front is like a bowl half a bowl shape. Oh, it's like a dome in the front and then it's just open at the top. That's that's all it is. It's just you're outside, dude. So my perception of Hollywood Bowl has totally changed. But you can still scrub it. You can clean it. I mean, the I mean, there's the seats are dirty. Probably a, it was pro- it. back before we back before human time. It was probably a, a Tyrannosaurus's toilet. Mm-hmm. Tyrannoturd. A tyrannus <laughs> dropping Tyrannoturds in there. The the three that I recently saw that make the most impact on me because I used to see them all a lot is the Bone Storm, oh, the Bone Storm episode. Okay. Where now now we're talking. Okay. <laughs> Tell your parents to buy Bone Storm or go to hell. <laughs> what the fuck? It's, Bar- it's like a buff Santa. Yeah, he shoots the cartridge into the fucking Nintendo. Oh, and then he goes straight to Mars, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, he's like, Bone Storm, or, Bone Storm or, go- or go to hell. What? <laughs> <laughs> My mom gets mad because she thinks I tell her like you remind me so much of Marge. <laughs> <laughs> but she thinks it's a bad thing. I'm like, no. Like, she reminds me of her a lot. She goes, hmm. <laughs> she always does that. The Thri- thrill house. Oh, yeah, when he put thrill, it was like thrill ho. Yeah, you can <laughs> spell all of it. <laughs> I like it because he recreated that one uh, that one uh, uh, picture where that guy is like watching television and his fucking like hair's oh, all yeah, yeah, yeah. out. That's, I like the, that's that one. what's awesome about The Simpsons that you don't realize when you're a little kid. We were talk, talking about it before the podcast a little bit, how, how you watch things and it's like, oh, all the slapstick's funny, but you don't really get all the jokes. Right, mm-hmm. and then as you get older, you go, holy shit, this is a very dense, mm-hmm. like, this speaks on a lot of, it's a lot of social commentary, especially for that time. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, it's weird because it's like you actually win. You get two shows. Yeah. My other one was uh, when, when Bart... <laughs> opens a credit line for Santa's little helper, Santos L. Hopper. <laughs> it starts it starts ringing up stuff on uh, Mr. Santos. I know. That one and then the one I recently watched Burns, I watched it so many Burns. <laughs> that one with Rodney Dangerfield was cool because that's the only thing we listened to on the way back home mm-hmm. from Portland. But the one I wanted to mention was the one with um with Freddie Quimby. <laughs> the one where he's all like, chow there, say it right. Say it. Chow there. Chow there. She like there. gives him a big fucking whoop about his accent. Yeah. But his is way worse. Yeah. Chow there. <laughs> <laughs> say it right. The the funny part about that episode is that Bart's, Bart ditches school mm-hmm. and ends up in the in the backseat of Freddie Quimby's car. Mm-hmm. He ends up going to the, the event, sees something that he shouldn't have saw, but mm-hmm. ends up being a key witness to it. Yes. So in order for him to acquit freddy of the crimes that he allegedly committed he has to confess that he was there and he ditched school yeah right. and then there's this one scene that sticks with me the most it's 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 bart looking at uh bart looking at uh skinner and he's all like i know you can read my thoughts boy <laughs> <laughs> and he's all like you know, he's like I'll, he's all like and let you know i'll put your ass in detention He's like, yes, I think thoughts that I shouldn't say at all. <laughs> and, then, and then it pans to Homer. He's like, and I know you could read my thoughts, boy. And picture Homer looking plain as fuck, right? He's like, I know you could read my thoughts, boy. Meow, 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 meow. Dude, oh my gosh. That thing brought so ba- so many memories back. I think um, I actually do remember some episodes. And one was when they were stuck at Itchy, itchy and Scratchy Land. Nice. Oh, yeah. That one was, like, fantastic. And it kind of fed into one of my weird fears with, like, animatronics coming to life. Oh, yeah. Um, and then the 
The episodes where Sideshow Bob is trying to kill Bart. Kelsey Grammer does the voice of Sideshow mm-hmm. Bob. Classic. Oh my and goodness. All, anything with Sideshow Bob trying to get Bart, I always, like, that just stuck with me. Especially because they did, they did a lot of uh, callbacks, like the rake joke. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it always comes back. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I thought those were great. And then, this is kind of cheesy, but I think it works in my favor. The Simpsons film. Because after all of those years that they've been doing The Simpsons... The film actually still had an original concept, and it was, it, it its own concept was strong enough to be a film. Yeah, yeah. It, they it, basically it, destroyed Springfield in a sense, and they kept it going. Like it was yeah. a really good. The film was beautiful, and I I laughed the entire way through because they kept their humor consistent. Yeah. Because usually when they translate to film, they fuck it up big time. Yeah. And they actually, where did really you find this job. guy? I like this guy, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was great. And then oh, last one. Um, anything from the what is the House of Horrors? Wait, what is, the Treehouse of, of Horrors. Tree, Treehouse of Horrors. I had the whole set because uh, you know I download shit, so um, I fucked up and I thought I downloaded what? like all of the Simpsons, but I got all the Treehouse of Horror episodes, every single one. Nice. And I watched all of them, dude. Over the, and over. That's all I had of the Simpsons. My favorite Treehouse of Horror one was the one we recently watched, was the fucking X Files. Yeah. One. <laughs> <laughs> Mulder shows Homer his ID and it's him all fucking spread out. As a man what kills me about that episode is. Is when they they uh, hook up Homer to the lie detector machine. Yeah, <laughs> and they ask him, "Oh, well, this is how it works. Do you understand?" And he says, "Yes." yes. And it blows up. <laughs> yeah, that shit fucking blows up. <laughs> because he said it so calmly. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> the machine, it's like, Do you that really? big of a lie? Yeah. <laughs> the machine. I don't understand to that extent. It's yeah. gonna blow up a machine. <laughs> I've never seen a lie this of this magnitude. <laughs> Can I come to you? Boom. <laughs> and then, and I come in peace. Same oh, episode, dude. Right? I bring you I bring peace. you peace. Like <laughs> dude, I loved watching that episode because this is when I was still like deep into UFOlogy. Oh, my God. Um, and fucking <laughs> just trying to be like getting haunted by the fact that like, fuck, was this an alien? Because right. like, when it premiered, I was like, what the fuck? They see yeah, yeah, it's the- And the X-Files are in it. And the guys from the X-Files right. are in it. And he's glowing and shit. <laughs> and they turned out to be fucking <laughs> He's just drugged up because they're trying to keep him alive. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't, but they, uh, my favorite part is they explain why he's like, <laughs> like dazed out of his yeah. mind, but they never explain why he just starts glowing as he walks into the woods. Oh, it's because it's, he's been in the fucking power plant so long. That's all it is. <laughs> like, oh, that green hue is because I've been in the power plant so long. <laughs> he might as well say it like, it was like, oh, the reason for my my ghoulish green hue is because I've been <laughs> prancing, prancing around the nuclear power plant so long. And that was the first time I actually tried the Burns impression. It's not bad, dude. It was not bad. The funny thing is, how, there are a lot of these like internal jokes. Where it's like <laughs> they let him. How, how old is he though? Like they let him walk out of the. They, fucking no, yeah, they, they, they do all this work on him and they just <laughs> shoot him out into the woods. That's and Doctor Nick for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> But then there's the joke of how old is Mr. Burns, and they never confirm it. Yeah, he's old. He's old, but it's like they have flashbacks that are inconsistent. Like, he'll be, like, they'll have a flashback of him being young in, like, the Renaissance period. Like, <laughs> shit like that. I remember, I remember there was one like that where Grandpa Simpson, he's like, I lied about my age to get into World War I. And this was a fucking <laughs> he's baby. a baby. He's all like, it's time for your nap, cadet. <laughs> and I'm not tired. you. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not tired. <laughs> well, okay, because uh, the writing on the show, uh, especially now, like with our backgrounds and understanding of comedy, it's like they were doing something that was almost ahead of its time, if you really think of it. Yeah, I mean, when yeah. you look at what Family Guy's doing, and even when Family Guy started, they they kind of have cheats, and it's kind of a uh, I don't know they they took a, a basic approach to comedy. They had a, they they created a new punchline, which was the uh, flashback style. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's what made it unique. But when it came down to their like premises for episodes, it wasn't. It was, it was with like, Family Guy. They could they could say anything and just and then like insert flashback here and with, insert with a celebrity. But they were offensive anything. too. They were offensive. It, yeah, that was their their, their flashback their, is just potpourri. Like right. anything could go the, down. Like but that. Family they, Guy they, went for offense too. They went yeah. for controversy. Mm-hmm. Whereas The Simpsons, they don't really risk controversy. They, they don't. Just, it's almost a Seinfeld type of clean, like me and Mark talked before. There's a there's Seinfeld, which has a just like it's just pure clean comedy, and it's great, perfectly written. And then we have Louis C.K. Mm-hmm. Louis shows Louis, and it's just raunchy, and 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 it's so controversial, and that's it's dirty. Dude, that's but, my dude, though. But I love it. Yeah, I love the show. Brilliant. <laughs> but that's the difference between Simpsons and uh, 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 shit, fucking uh, Family Guy. <laughs> I would say it, the Simpsons are more structured, and th- with the that's yeah with. You not with the Simpsons not 
taking the, uh, I would say, not the easy way, but a different approach like Family Guy does, you actually are able to have a first, second, and third act right. within a 20-minute span. These shows, are mm. they go from 20 to 25 minutes mm. each Simpsons episode. And they teach a, a message at least. With, with mm. Family Guy, with what? I would say about three or four flashbacks a show at about mm. five, ten seconds. Mm-hmm. You sacrifice a little bit from a every plot. act, yep. and you have to make it quick now well, you have to sacrifice those times for other things within the within well, the episode I'll, let me hop in real quick um when it comes to we'll say from season five and on with american damn it i keep saying american dad american in my head. family guy uh, american family guy <laughs> when it comes to family guy they started a, a new type of writing system but it's like a triple arc system yeah and it's like super quick arcs so if you've watched any recent Ameri- uh, Family Guy episode, damn, I guess I'm saying American Dad. Right. Um, I haven't watched any newer ones, but let's say just yeah. you know season seven, mm-hmm. they'll start with a conflict, like a story, a conflict, and it's it's concluded, and then a new st- problem comes out of nowhere. Yeah, like there's an episode where Peter can't stop listening to this song called "Birds the Word" or whatever, and they hate oh, it. Yeah. Everyone in the family hates it, but <laughs> yeah. by, like they do an arc. And then at the end of the arc, he finds out that Jesus works at a record store. And then it's about that. And, yeah, and that's a new arc there. And then they follow that arc until uh-huh. him, like, Jesus gets too caught up in the fame. And then there's, a, like, a quick arc after that. I that's three you. arcs in an episode, which was kind of strange. Yeah. Um, when it came to The Simpsons, especially the ones we've been watching, not the newer ones, but, you know, the original classic episodes, you feel like there was a, a huge team involved, a, a huge team of co- comedians um, that had understanding of, of script writing structure. Yeah. So when it came down to them telling jokes, it didn't interfere with the progress of what they were showing you, right? Mm-hmm. We just watched uh, Burn Baby Burns. Yeah. And yeah, they, they, they implemented the Rodney Dangerfield joke style in a way that it complemented the episode. Yeah, because those jokes didn't actually interfere with the plot whatsoever. He exactly, joked. and then even though we had a, there's a small scene where he's doing his one liners, <laughs> and he just uh, he's walking by himself and he's doing the one liners. He's like, wait a minute, hey, who am I talking to? <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> who am I talking? To? Who am I talking to? <laughs> 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 fucking hilarious. But you know that that's another they squeeze in a Simpsons style joke in the midst of the Rodney Dangerfield style. Yeah. So when it came to the Simpsons, um, where. Uh, family Guy would exploit a celebrity and talk shit about him. Mm-hmm. They would actually use a celebrity in whatever quality they had and exactly. use it to their advantage. Or they'd do an end joke and have George Clooney do a cat. Or, or oh, like, no, that was for South Park. Or South Park. You yeah. can, oh, well, let's play. That's a good example. So you can use your celebrity to the fullest extent, add mm-hmm. their qualities within the episode, or you could be like South Park and do the opposite <laughs> and only have George Clooney play a cat and meow, meow once. And that's it, the whole that's episode. It. As a fucking okay, um, cat. <laughs> but um, yeah, when it came down to the Simpsons writing style, and I'm speaking from a technical standpoint because I don't have the nostalgia that's strong enough to like support okay. the, the show itself. When it came down, when it comes down to the Simpsons writing style, I can tell that like, you know, someone like Conan was involved. Because yeah, you, you can, can see that there's a very intellectual side to The Simpsons. And as I grew and we, with our understanding of comedy and script writing, when we watch the show now, it's like, holy shit. They, they squeezed in a lot of jokes in a very intricate way, oh, yeah. but kept it simple. In a, like, they kept it pop in a weird way. Um, and they still tell a story without diverting away. The end. Well, and then <laughs> I'm done. I want to bring attention to... The one last part of this uh, segment here, and that oh, is. Oh, that's not ended. <laughs> well, I have so to. I, we're, on, we're on time constraints, oh, and I, ju- I want to keep it. Uh, I, want, I, want, I want Slick's opinion. <laughs> we got we got the guru well, here for no reason. Well, that's what I'm saying. I have the most important. I have the okay. probably the most important episode to discuss. It's a two parter, as a matter of fact. Jesus, this this episode got everyone in a frenzy. I uh, the, if for the, all the people over forty that listen to the Mark and Andre show, they, they hear of a show called Dynasty. They had this one question of who shot JR that needed to get solved in the 80s. Now, this was our who shot JR, and this was who, who shot, shot Mr. Burns, Burns <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Boynes. Who shot him? Everyone had a motive. He takes the oil out of the, the school, which was under an oil rig that mm-hmm. groundskeeper Willie uh, found, I an mean, oil well, and... They end up trying to hide. They end up hiring Tito Puente. Tito Puente <laughs> ended, ended up having it out for him. Homer did. The song they did was brilliant. oh gosh, what was it? Um, Senor Burns, <laughs> El Diablo con dinero. Brilliant. Do, 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 do. Homeboy does a backflip yeah. at the end. Brilliant, brilliant, dude. <clears throat> uh, the everyone that, has it out for him. Mm-hmm. Everyone does, dude. Even Lisa, mm-hmm. even mm-hmm. Lisa has it out for him because she can't go to school now. Bart, um, 
Bart fucking has it out for him because the dog. <laughs> they fucking Santos, uh, Santos, 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 a little helper ends up getting injured because of burns. Yes, because of the debris Good. fell on his ass. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people have it out for Mr. Burns in these two in these two episodes. Seven mm-hmm. Eleven had a big cup. I don't know if a lot Who of people remember Mr. the cup, Burns. but it has all the characters that could have been involved. Now, it has everybody, and you don't expect. Mm-hmm. Spoiler alert, guys! It's been twenty five <laughs> years. That Maggie don't, Simpson. Don't no. With, Maggie, don't 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 spoil it. I haven't seen it yet. You don't know what my DVR. Fuck, you're a piece of shit, Mark. I d- DVR'd it back then. I saw him watch it. <laughs> DVR didn't even Fuck. exist. Fuck. He still has it though. He's just holding on. I TiVo'd that. <laughs> TiVo wasn't even there, dude. <laughs> the um, there's so many like no one expected Maggie Simpson to be the one to do it. That's but, the joke. Exactly, but no, no, there are subtle hints within the episodes. Mm-hmm. Like taking candy from a baby. Mm-hmm. Dude, there's these little subtle hints that if you look back at it. Yeah. Uh, when the cops act, the first two suspects that the cops get is Santos L. Halper and fucking Maggie. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and you don't think of that now. Like, holy shit, like they gave you the answer. They did, but it's like they, they subvert your expectations because... What, well, you're not a, what grudge does exactly. a baby have? You yeah, know? exactly. What, gri- what grudge would a baby have? <laughs> and uh, the way they played the scene, though, was like, oh, you? Oh, oh no. yeah, I didn't see you here. Yeah, it is. Hey, what do you have there? <laughs> 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 what Smithers thought he shot Mr. Burns? <laughs> and he <it> just... <laughs> he shot that dude in his wooden leg. <laughs> What's his name? Uh, Jasper. Yeah, Jasper. And he's like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I think I shot your leg, sir. Who shot who in the wood now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking Jasper. And I do remember the hype behind that episode. Like, it, it was, uh, how long did they hold it? It wasn't just a week, though. Because you think, had to wait to the season that, premiere. That, that, that was the season. season break, right? See? <clears throat> See, that's the kind of spoiler. If you would have saw on Facebook today, uh, you would have murdered somebody. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Fucking Maggie, what? Oh, God damn, I got to die. You ruined it. And, but I thought that was just a great play on a joke. Because not only, yeah, they subverted your expectations, but it's just like... The baby did it? Like, yeah. that's fucking great. That's <laughs> solid. And the baby had, like, a legit grudge against yeah. him? That's even I like, funnier. I like, like it when um, when Lisa tries to solve this crime. He's like, Lisa, I don't think you should be st- uh, learning. Uh, I don't think you should be uh, uh, solving a crime of who committed a murder. <laughs> How about you solve the mystery of who put the, the mud in the freezer? <laughs> and then fucking Bart comes out. He's like, who wants chocolate ice cream? And then fucking Homer's like, oh! <laughs> and then... And then so Lisa gets so fucking invested into this whole operation and this bird, it ends up going to the extent of where this bird goes, clue, clue. It's like, oh, thank you, bird. He's like, if I, if you weren't so riddled with disease, I'd kiss you. Yeah. And then so she writes this out. Burns closes out his story when he's out, out of the uh, when he's in the hospital, mm-hmm. and then she's like, and with your last ounce of effort, you pointed to W and S, which flipped to your perspective was Maggie Simpson. He's like, no, he's like, all I did was swallow my fucking uh, swallow my gold fillings. He's all like, I know, I know these uh, uh, like the hospital people are, have uh, uh, sticky fingers. Yeah. <laughs> After she did all that, <laughs> After after Lisa technically all solved that work, it. she got it. Yeah. No, there was a joke at the end of that episode, the first part, where uh, I think it was the the surgeon. Yeah, Hibbert. He was Hibbert, and he was like, uh, "Yeah, we don't know who did it, but maybe you can find out." He's pointing at the oh, camera, yeah, and she was like, "Well, uh, me? Yeah, <laughs> like, I, like, I, I, can I can try. I can try. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, I don't dude." When he did that, I was like, "Oh shit!" And then they they did the play like on perspective. The, those kind of jokes, man, very complex stuff. And and that episode was super crazy. Did you feel like were you all a part? Were you a part oh, of that? Absolutely, hype? dude. Absolutely. Yeah. Dude. Did you figure it out? No, hell no. I was I was a little. Whoever got it right too at Seven Eleven would have got a mad. Right. Prize. Yeah. You had to. Uh, there was but a game so, behind it. Yeah. It was so beyond everyone's ex- expectations that they they had that creepy thing where where Lisa is, is walking in all creepy. Don't oh, yeah. eat the, the clues. Don't eat the clues. What's that, what's that show, dude? Um, the name slipping my my head. Slick. Come on, dude. Twin Peaks? <laughs> Twin Peaks, yeah. Oh. That Twin Peaks I was reference. fucking joking. Seriously, no, that's I was it, just joking. Dude. <laughs> I swear I was joking. You <laughs> serious? No I was way, joking. dude. I that's just, it, dude. I just, that's oh, completely perfect. what they were referencing when, when she's walking in because it's that, that little, um, I don't know what's the proper term, um, midget person. Oh, know. okay. <laughs> little person. But he, he, he walks in like all... I, I think they did it where well, they filmed it backwards and then he's talking. Yeah. I forget what he says. Does he sound stupid like Lisa? He's weird. It's like, because he's saying something about gum in the show. He's a, 
what does he say? Wait, Twin Peaks came out at the time of The Simpsons? No, it's before, but they're just referencing it. You know what I mean? Oh, okay, okay. Because Lisa Twin comes Peaks. in all creepy, and it it, yeah. it even looks like the same scene or anything, and she goes, cool. don't eat the clues, because like, she's kind of saying it backwards. <laughs> and fucking Wiggum doesn't get it. Yeah, he's like, ah, <laughs> what now? <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. Yeah, I, I couldn't think of the name. Do you... That's You're, so weird. I was really fucking. What made you cool. say that? Because I just thought it was a weird show. Yeah, know? and that's exactly. I was probably thinking about a pair of tits. <laughs> I was. That's all right. <laughs> Sorry, I did there. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Ten points. Ten points, motherfucker. That's all you're gonna get. Twin knockers. Twin. I even knockers. liked it when they did. Um, when they did the the super spinoff episode where it starts where uh, Bart and Milhouse are like sh- hawking loogies at the at the cars. Oh, the, it was like. <laughs> 22 Simpson, something like that. It's yeah, like, 22 Simpson uh, spinoffs or something like that. Yeah. And dude, those that whole episode was so cool because it all intertwined. Yeah, it's it just shows... The, oh, they were shooting ketchup and mustard in mm-hmm. cars. What the hell? Which is fucking dangerous. <laughs> which is dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Because when you smear that shit on your windshield... Oh, you're yeah, dead. You, oh, you're dead. You're it's done. Like, the... I they ended up doing almost every type of episode. Like there's references to everything: Pepsi, Coke, Zima. Fucking March makes homemade Pepsi. I made homemade Pepsi. I don't know why the fuck. Oh, how do you make homemade Pepsi? She goes, "It's a little thick, but the price is right." (laughs) Oh, what kills me on that episode is is Lisa doesn't want to go to the dance. Yeah, so she's like, "All right, we could just stay here and, and have our own party." Every Simpson dance now. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> here comes oh, when, Le- when Marge goes out. Uh, she's playing basketball with Bart. She's like, here comes the shack attack. <laughs> fucking the ball goes right in Bart's face. I told you to watch out. <laughs> fucking oh, Marge man. cracks me up. The man. thing about the Simpsons is, you could relate anything in life to it, man. It's like, oh, that's just like when the Simpsons yeah. did this or whatever. Mm-hmm. People get annoyed with me because I do it all the time. Like, yeah. Like, to this day, every time I go to a theme park and we park, like how you were talking about the Itchy and Scratchy Land, mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember, the, it's just, all it is is uh, the, uh, itchy, the lot. It, itchy Lot and the Scratchy, scratchy lot. lot. It's a huge place. Yeah. So every time we park, I always go, remember, we park in the Itchy Lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of that too, man, they made my dreams fucking come true because not only did Universal Studios do the Simpsons ride. Oh my gosh, the Simpsons like land. Oh, it's so Perfect good, dude. Replica, dude, dude. I was immediately like, it was my birthday too, and I go right just into Moe's, and within a blink, I had a Duff beer in my hand. Mm-hmm. I had to complete the circle. I know, I know, you don't. Drink, <laughs> I know you don't drink sleep, no, but, yeah. but you should. Did probably you start, get? A, did you get a Duff? No, I didn't get a Duff. You oh. start I, I, I've, ne- I've never drank. That's the thing. So start at oh. Duff. Yeah, <laughs> I know. but man. drink Duff responsibly. <laughs> <laughs> All the seven, the seven uh, alcoholic. Swirly, fucking swirly, uh, yeah. regret, yeah. a bunch of other ones. Duff Gardens is there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did Luigi's have a restaurant. crusty burger. Oh. That, that I did, like, you know, I, yeah, I, didn't, I didn't get a Duff, but, you know. That's all right. That's the Quickie Mart's thing. there. Quickie Mart's there's there. There's also a Quickie Mart. I don't know if you know, there's the one in Grand Terrace. No, I haven't. You what? actually told me the other oh, yeah. day. I didn't, I didn't know that was, they kept that. That's one of the ones that they've actually kept. There was a few amount of uh, Quickie Marts that 7-Eleven were Blessed to be disguised as a quick mart. That's mm-hmm. fucking dope. And it, the, the, one in Grand, the one in Grand Terrace is actually still has the sign. And I don't know how long they're going to have it. It's one of those things where just could be knows, catch it before it goes. I think I'm going to have to go over there and shoot a couple of uh, shots and be like, yeah, I'm going to do that. Let's do it. Shoot a little video. Yeah, because when the movie came out and, and they were doing that, I went into 7 Eleven and just bought a gang of stuff. I, I bought a Radioactive Man comic, I bought a six pack of what? Buzz Cola. I bought the crusty cereal. That's cool. Um, I, I don't know, like Homer straws, uh, all the collector cups they had. Nice. I just spent all my money on <laughs> random Dude, and stuff. The action figures too from Playmates. What? Dude, I, I I wish those took off, but they didn't. But man, those are cool. They had all the characters: Babysitter Bandit, all yeah. the hundreds of characters. Freddie Quimby. They even had, yeah. It's just I'm not. I'm. I have almost all of them. Dude. Yeah, he has yeah. almost all of them, dude. Like serious. He has collection. them open though. That's the thing okay. that sucks. Okay. Well, you know. I want to hear your opinion on Simpsons as a whole before mm-hmm. we end up wrapping it up. Exactly. I, I mean, you're in, an avid fan, and I want to know what made you such an avid fan. What what makes you pick The Simpsons over any other animation? I just I just feel a direct connection to them. I can't explain it, man. I just mm-hmm. feel I like like I said, it's just a lot of stuff that they do. It's like you can relate to in life somehow. It's like oh, not not necessarily all the ridiculous things, but. You know certain messages and stuff like that. It's 
it's all there, dude. It just gives you a warm feeling in your heart, dude. And just, I know I could all, anytime I'm down, I could put on just one of those episodes and be back up. Again. Big back up, dude. It's like, man, <laughs> that's, I, I feel 100%, dude. How do that's you feel about it? Uh, uh, its current state. Do you watch it now? I do. I do. I, I still watch it. I I know it has that slump, but I still get entertained by it. Like I I honestly do. You know what I mean? I mean, w- one thing that I have to speak on is just the fact that they're still here. Yeah. Dude. Oh yeah. They're still, but here, they're still here, and they somehow still generate original episodes to oh, yeah. the Simpsons lore. Yeah. You've done and, and over how many episodes? And they go back like they'll they'll be talking about something and then they still reference something from season two. Like it still mm-hmm. all makes sense. You know what I mean? But that's great. Like, how can you even imagine? It's, oh yeah, it's the amount it's rough, of you dude. say it, it takes two weeks to watch the entire series all the way through, <laughs> and they still manage to still find new content. Yeah, we have some downs, some bad episodes, but episodes why did i say it like I know. some bad episodes but at the same time they still come up with new ideas with the vast amount of characters that they have they change some things around like meds with fucking what's her name now the teacher chick yeah yeah everything oh like, she she she's died the, in the show yeah, too Krabappel's dead because she died, died? She well, in real life the the girl who did the woman who did the episode and it was a nancy yeah uh, i forget her last Reagan? name yeah no. Yeah, it was Nancy Reagan. You got it. <laughs> Nancy Reagan. <laughs> I forgot her name. I'll get her wow, right now. Wow, they killed Mr. Sc- well, well, because she died. Sh- shortly yeah. after that, yeah. like she she passed away in real life. What and, the and they kind of. I'm sorry. I'm just you know. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's wow. funny. the The thing that Bart wrote was, "I miss you, Mrs. Krabappel." Oh yeah, and in the beginning of the episode, what it was uh, it was sad, dude. <laughs> damn, but it's the a downer, fact, man. They're still going. They're mm-hmm. still going, and and I was talking to Mark before we uh, recorded. I'm like. What's gonna happen when it ends? It has yeah. to end. We can't be fifty and they're still doing no, this. I, I, I no, I think I think it's a good time. I think season thirty. Like that's that's that makes what, sense. That's what in my head. You know what I mean? Like, like because yeah. because like you said, it can't go on forever. So do you want you know the dude that plays Homer to pass away and then it's like oh what do we do now and it's just random. In the you know show, what I mean? just in the show. And we'll end it with a solid season. You know what I mean? Like might end it with a film. Uh, with another movie, you know what I mean? SpongeBob, um, SpongeBob uh, Simpsons crossover. <laughs> wow. The thing is that what sucks for me is like I have a, a personal, uh, like I, I have this bucket list of a bunch of ridiculous things I want to do, and one mm. of them is like I wanted to be a part of the Simpsons in an episode or something. You know what I mean? It's like to even just be like involved with to even just say meow <laughs> to be a cat in the Simpsons, dude. <laughs> to, to do a storyboard of yeah. some kind, like okay, some, I something where it's like I. This episode, I, I I'm you know something, but you know I'm just like I'm, I'm running out of time here. <laughs> no, you're not. You got. I mean, I really think this show's just gonna like just th- this it. holds too many records. It's too strong in 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 culture. Mm-hmm. It is. Simpsons dude. Everybody is knows Simpsons. Culture. Everybody. I remember knows, yeah. when they were <clears throat> suggesting that they were going to cancel it, uh, and yeah. people lost their fucking minds. Mm-hmm. People rioted. In they the they the all the all the characters they um. They were on they, strike. They took a, a big for, pay cut, yeah, though, yeah. to do it. And they're like, we're still down for this, you know right, what I mean? Right, I thought they protested for not being paid enough or something like that. Not protested. The writer's that. strike affected a lot of things. Right, right. And during that time. Mm-hmm. And like I said, they, I guess I didn't know that they took a pay cut. The, the actual, you get paid act, the actual actors yeah, took, took the pay cut in order to, I guess, satisfy everybody else. And, and they kept it going. They get cool. paid crazy, though. Like, I'm sure. That's fantastic, man. Yeah, um, man. This... Those, those are people that I would like to meet that I, I haven't met yet. Like, yeah. I, th- I, think, I, th- I think you'd cry. If you oh, were. absolutely, dude. There, there's, there's been moments where I've, like, I don't know how to react when I meet some, somebody. Just pee a little. Like, just, just little get it bit. out of your system. Well, oh, yeah, I wear diapers when I know. <laughs> when when I you know, know it's about to go down, you get a diaper. Yeah. There there's, a few, there's a few people that, that shook me up, and I think that will kind of... Just it, mess me over, dude. Debilitate you to the <laughs> yeah. point where he's in a wheelchair rolling up to him. <laughs> <laughs> I like the Simpsons. <laughs> the hell are you talking to me like that? <laughs> really? What are you doing? He's like, wow, you really just talk like that. Of course, it's my voice. Hey, don't worry. I, he, uh, Mark met Pablo Francisco. Fucking, he looks full like him. shut down. He looks like full a shut down. Like I'm, he's holding his phone. I'm like, Mark, give me your phone. <laughs> and he, like he's not moving, I'm like Mark, give me your phone yeah, so dude. we can take this picture, dude. It's gonna be and he fucking fro- like, what, that's like, one of the bro- person I would freeze up with 
And I did. And then he did, he did a vocal impression right in front of him, and he fucking did it with him. And Hell it, yeah. Like, it was tight, dude. Yeah, yeah. Af- afterwards, though, this fool was, like, about to cry. Like, but dude, No, just to you, but it's just, like, the impact of meeting something mm-hmm. or it someone. Him, well, which I did fucking start crying and shit. But Van Damme, if I ever meet Van Damme, I'd probably <laughs> fucking, like, have a heart attack and die. Probably or, such a wrist right or, in front of him. Uh, just, he's iconic, dude. And <laughs> even, some even The Rock. If I meet The Rock, I'd probably die. I'd hug mm-hmm. him. Like, too yeah. long, though. Like, dude, he'd be like, ha, ha, get off me. He's all oh, like, doing the Instagram video. I'm all, like, kissing his fucking face. <laughs> <laughs> get the hell off me. And Rock's not down like that. <laughs> he's all doing, you know, he's, like, trying to be cheerful in his Instagram post. <laughs> Kevin Hart's like, get the fuck off me. Like, <laughs> Kevin Hart starts beating my ass because they're all attached to the right now. Oh, yeah, because right he's now. tucking his, like, sweater, like, ready to go whenever. The Simpsons is quite the... It's a long-lasting show. It's older than... Dirt. Uh, older than me by two years. It's um, incredible. The, I'm just glad I'm just, like uh, Slick said, I'm just glad to be part of the experience. There's yeah, things man. that I can attribute to my life where I kind of felt like Bart or where I felt as dumb as Homer or as smart as Lisa or mm-hmm. as or as, mm-hmm. as Mark. <laughs> <laughs> but all in all, this show has been a part of my life. There's just things that you, time, you'll, you'll never forget. Just little bits that... They might not relate to anything, dude, but you'll... Something clicks in your head and you just want to quote that mm-hmm. and it's it just makes you happy. How how many Simpson things that we say when we're in Portland, dude, dude? And that's the end of that chapter. Lots. That's the end of that chapter. <laughs> with this scarf. Dude, there's tons of stuff, dude. It was it was good to I don't know how many times we sang that Cletus song, dude. <laughs> oh, you know what? Hey. Speaking of a Simpsons guru that we have here, uh, <laughs> Slick is also a, a song aficionado of Cletus the Slack John Yokel. <laughs> you don't have to do the full whole song, but to close out the segment, I would like for you to do the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Put me on the spot here? Of course. Of course. This is the Mark and Andre show. Take it away, Slick. <clears throat> some folk will never read a skunk, but then again, some folk will like Cletus the Slack Jock Yokel. Hey, I can see my mom from up here. <laughs> hey, mom! Get off the damn roof! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, dude, that... Cletus is a special character. Oh, themselves. So let's go to the conspiracy <laughs> topic of the day here on the Mark and Andre show. Oh, but this isn't necessarily like a conspiracy per se because this is all and out fake as fuck. Right, oh, but, without but, a doubt. But Fox and UPN during the late, uh, the late 90s mm-hmm. had these episodes where we're talking the Apollo moon landing hoax, whether it was real or fake... We had the incident at, let me see what we had here. Uh, the incident at Canyon Lake or whatever it was called where a family's recording mm-hmm. <laughs> recording themselves being like kidnapped by aliens one by one. Right. That's ridiculous. Um, Perfectly fit into an hour episode, by the way. Oh, my God. Exactly. <laughs> and then they teased you along the way. He's like, watch at the very end where real life, well, the family comes in contact with a real life alien. Oh, my God. Get down, everyone! <laughs> like, 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 fucking bucking up. down an alien. Oh my yeah. God. Then they had um, this one that uh, we so all this saw. One was... uh, M. Night Shyamalan sci-fi documentary about... Oh, him. man. I can't wait till we get that out one. And so this is a time where social media, internet's really not... It's really not prevalent right now. AOL's barely getting off the ground. And rumors can't spread fast. So you you are... Force fed to believe that everything on the everything on television that they put off with a disclaimer in the front warning, which you're about to see is very graphic and maybe you know as soon as that graphic comes on it goes down. Right. You were after I saw that Apollo Moon documentary, Apollo Moon uh, hoax documentary, mm-hmm. I became I I investigated more myself. Became a believer. And, and you know, when we go into that one, I, I can't believe they actually made it. It yeah. doesn't make sense why they made it, right? It's, it's very when you talk about one of the most craziest, <laughs> one of the most craziest events in human history, where we actually go to the moon being fake, you you touch yourself on you put yourself on dangerous territory. You touch yourself. I know. Yeah, you put yourself. You touch on, yourself on dangerous territory. I just imagine you, you touch yourself for many occasions, yeah. but like, the moon landing. Dangerous like, territory. You do it for me. <laughs> you you tell you tell Buzz Aldrin that he, he faked the moon landing. He'll sock you. Like there's been footage of him decking a kid about the moon landing. <laughs> <laughs> mister, mister, I just saw this special on Fox. Didn't even let him finish. He's like, I already know that fucking kid saw on YouTube. <laughs> small step for me, small punch for me is a big step for you, little kid. <laughs> the, um, but the, 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 the Apollo moon landing, like learning all that footage, like the flag doesn't wave. 
well, I mean, the flag waves, but why does it wave on the moon? There's no atmosphere. There's no gravity, no atmosphere. Like, there's a bunch of things that come along the way, but slick. I mean, you you can imagine this. Put yourself in the Mm -hmm. in your shoes uh, back then. It's like you're you you believe it more because it was on television. And then not only that. Okay, say say you're a little kid when this is happening, and you you see your parents invested in it. You always trust your parents. You know what I mean. You always like. You know, my da- my dad knows everything. My mom knows everything, yeah. you know? So when you see them, like, say, tearing up over the- this, like, man, we did it. America. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what are you supposed to believe? You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. But, you know, like you said, this is pre-internet era. Yeah. Right? There's, what is the point, you know? There's no Walking Dead spoilers at this point. At, at this point. At this right. point. Not yet. And, and this uh, <laughs> documentary, like, really actually went in. Like, they, it, it almost has the same amount of detail as like a forensics uh, type show like yeah. you know yeah. they're they're bringing in experts and they're explaining why these things are false and it's legit info to my, in my opinion you know based on this one in particular uh, you know they they went for the fact that there is no atmosphere on the moon uh the fact that we weren't even you know we weren't developed enough as Americans and scientists, mm-hmm. our technology wasn't strong enough to even get us off the fucking ground. <laughs> and then suddenly, no, and they showed all the failed attempts oh, yeah, really? in a row. Oh. Like, like the, the Neil Armstrong could have died. In that yeah, he could have died. Uh, they they showed you know because we were testing without humans, of course. Gotcha. And every attempt was a failure. It was just and it explodes. And they say, how do we go from these failures to, to let's all. try so the next year? You're yeah, the next year was just like let's go for it. eleven and. Um, yeah, they, they had a lot. They had that. They had just the atmosphere on the planet. Leaving, they're, you're driving around on it. You being, know, with being their, in your suits, leaving the Van Allen belt with all that radiation. Exactly. We had that. We had uh, them using their what, their Land Rovers or Moon Rovers or whatever yeah. the fuck Rovers. Uh, the way that the the sand reacts to the vehicles and how fast the vehicles move didn't make any sense. Um, then they had the actual movement of the people on the moon. Uh, they were like, if we just if we just speed up the footage times two, you get basic movement, and that's what they showed. Like it mm-hmm. just shows them walking at a normal pace, and they were like, yeah, if you just double the footage, they walk at a normal pace, hmm. and it looks perfect. It's not like it looks choppy. It, yeah, it, you're not getting any transients or, or weird effects taking place in the footage. Mm-hmm. No, it's looking like us walking to the that's like crazy. at the mall. Um, so when they're showing all this stuff, me and Mark are looking like, well, why would they actually show this on purpose on a television network? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but it came to this documentary. It was like, I think they almost made it to make people go, this is bullshit. Like, it's like a reversal effect. Like, this oh, is the truth. Where, but we're oh, casual oh, kooks. Yeah. It's the truth, but you're going to think it's bullshit. Like, like watching like, those, those alien things, like you watching, you're like, this is fake as hell. You know what I mean? So what you're saying, right, the right. same thing, like this looks like, this another, is on TV. So this is exactly like it's, these it's guys of, look like idiots and it's like this weird uh reverse psychology tactic oh, where it's man. like we're yeah, showing we're telling you the way. truth and you don't even believe it because the I way like that, that. They i never really thought it, of that dude it's it's cheesy the way they present it yeah but that's only going to affect a certain amount of people though like right. for 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 what it's intended mm-hmm. you are are given this evidence mm. and you are taking it to believe however you want it no one's I wouldn't say that the general perception is them not believing in it and thinking right. it's it's crap, but it it did bring you know I tuned into that because I was still in like you said I was into the paranormal and I was into that kook, like crazy shit right and <laughs> dude watching that is just it makes sense like yeah. having them like where the where they have to jet back to Earth mm-hmm. they where's the fucking crater that they left right the, they oh. have footage of the crater when they launched off right but as it actually landed there were inconsistencies. Um, the way that the actual ship launched away was inconsistent. It just yeah. looks like something. It really just looks like something's on strings, and they just pulled it up. <laughs> I, I, it looks I give, really bad. I give DAP to Stanley Kubrick for directing that whole <laughs> thing, though. Well, and the, and the He's I brilliant. Think He's a brilliant, the, brilliant man. The most glaring um, inconsistency, based on the standards that they had set for this period, mm-hmm. um, not with the stuff that we know now. Um, yeah, the lighting. We have two <laughs> yes. light sources. If you're if you're on the moon, you're mm-hmm. gonna get a light source from the sun. That's one, it, one direction, one direction only. You're not gonna get a light in this direction, and then have a light. Your your shadow tells you everything. So uh, we're gonna get a shadow pointing in this direction mm-hmm. uh, for you podcasters that are listening. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, let's say the shadow is pointing to the left of your body, and then you have a shadow uh, pointing behind your body as well. That means you have two light sources. Yeah. You can't have two shadows. It's not possible. Yes. For every light source, there will be a shadow. So in all of the footage, we have dual shadows, hmm. which is like if, you, if you've ever been in a gym, 
um, you will notice that there are four Gaim. to five different light sources. You're going to have different shadows. So in this case, they basically showed you that they had professional level lighting that was inconsistent. Yeah. That kind of shit. Exactly. Um, but they made it look kooky enough for you not to believe it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's like if you're in a place that has no atmosphere mm-hmm. and the ta- the back the background is literally all dark. Yeah, there's not a star. Jesus, where are the fucking stars at? Right. They didn't come out to play or what? Like, <laughs> I didn't, like it was literally every 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 pitch black, nothing more. It's very crazy, man. So that was a, a, a really. I, I wish I they would have made that, that a horror movie. That would. Oh, they did. Was, oh, yeah, they, they did. I, I I dragged him and yes. my friend Isaiah to oh, no, no, Apollo no, no. eighteen. I'm, I'm talking. I'm talking about a good one. I saw that one. That was terrible. Yeah, oh, I'm talking about it ended up being like clams. The clams are attacking. The yeah. ending was good. I think the ending was really cool because they I, left it to where it's like, well, there's we brought back rocks and they could be there, but dude, for them to fucking say that, fucking. <laughs> <laughs> rock crabs mm. are attacking and those are the reason why that we haven't been back to 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 the moon and it was oh yeah. my god that yeah. was a nightmare i've the, never watched that show <laughs> the, the next one i want to talk to you guys about and you've seen this one and i show uh andre this one as well is an incident at canyon lake or whatever it's called it was it's it's a um, it's this found footage documentary about a family that oh yeah that's what we were telling you about right yeah yeah they end up <laughs> You know, one kid ends up filming uh-huh. their whole family getting abducted one by one. Yeah. And Terrible. this, <laughs> looking at it from the perspective of a little kid, you'll believe it. You'll buy mm-hmm. into it because you don't know yeah. what the hell special effects is. Right. Dude. Now? Seeing seeing this go, go slowly and slowly. Where Watch like, it by yourself. Still pretty scary, dude. If you're watching it by yourself. It has oh, a, yeah. It is. I, 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 that. It depends on your background. I think it depends on your background. Okay. Because... <laughs> Because there's a lot of things that I laugh at, and I'm and I'm like ha 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 because I'm hanging out with somebody, and then I'll go back and watch it by myself. And I'm like, this is kind of creepy. Like I'll watch Evil Dead Two, and it's like a bunch of slapstick and uh, this yeah. and this. I'm watching it by myself, and I was like, this movie actually creeps me. Yeah, you want to be by trees? The trees will get you. Yeah, dude. I, I got it. The, uh, this is. Are you afraid of the dark? Scary. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is. It's almost like the same budget. I'm, Show the same creators. <laughs> the same creators. Bunch, of, got the bunch of Canadians got crazy and started to make a movie. They started to make a Blair Witch film. You know, like it, it was it was uh damn. Like when when Come to think when of it, we say one hoax, the, one of the characters in there was Keenan, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> there was one brother in there that had no, no one, like, nothing to say, like shit is going down. You, you nose is bleeding, he's just like Mm. No, he was he. After a while, he was just missing. No, like nobody. He's brought... the one that he's one of the three guys that went out. Oh, right. okay. I thought they just didn't they mention just him a buff black Yeah, dude to, to never attack. said a word the whole time. We no. were dying because we're like he has nothing to say about his girl. Not even nose bleeding. Not even like, like, yeah. Yeah. No, like like they're, they're, there's a high pitched noise and they're all like screaming and hurting yeah. and he and just the camera like, gets it. <laughs> he's not saying shit. So the alien abduction has. <laughs> so what ends up happening? <laughs> a couple of the guys end up going out. And they hear some, They hear a loud pop. Mm-hmm. But beforehand, the circuit breakers fry and everything. But then they hear a loud pop in the back. And they're mm-hmm. like, what the hell was that? So then they go out with the, with the footage that they have. And then they see an alien craft outside. And with that, you could see them with the red laser. <laughs> they're like pointing it at a cow. And then they're like, hey, what was this? And then all you see is that light the, uh, from the alien greys. Go up to them and I'll hear "ow" or yeah, like some yeah, shit. Yeah, and I'm like, whoa! One of these guys and, just got lasered. <laughs> what, yeah, what they essentially said was they were shooting this laser into the cow, and then the alien saw them and started shooting at them. But it, uh, continue the story so we can get into just the <laughs> shitty effects. So the family goes back into the house, and the aliens are onto them now. So <laughs> like they end up hearing <laughs> aliens inside the house. They end up hearing a, a, a frequency pitch that is so unbearable that the camera gets it, but then inside their heads they hear it too. Mm-hmm. But I guess, um, but I guess it was so like high intense that the camera ended up getting it. Then the phones start working, everything starts working despite the circuit breaker busted. And... Right, but not working, but like everything's overloading. So blenders are coming on. Yeah, and the lights and are over flickering. With, with that breaker this. already off, you, you, that could never happen. I don't care what type of fucking <laughs> circuit breaker they have. <laughs> I don't care what kind of alien. I know. Right? Just, <laughs> the, the sheer physics of this. Right, like that's just, just not regulation, man. <laughs> that's right, right. And, and then so the the first the three guys end up going out, and it's up. To, uh, with After, their shotguns. With their shotguns like they're going to do Everyone something. has a shotgun ready to go. Mm-hmm. They, <laughs> after a little while, 
the camera says, oh, the camera, when the camera starts, like, skidding, uh, it like, gets static get like, static in and out, like, the narrator's shit. like, from minute 47 to minute 52, this is when the camera just hits dead off. <laughs> and <laughs> after they start hearing the aliens in the second story, the family goes up there, and all you see is a red laser shoot out of one of the keyholes, and then the fucking dad shoots one of the aliens yeah. behind the door. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'll leave that till later. But <laughs> so after the fa- the through the same father and all two other guys end up leaving, and then they ha- don't come back for like another twenty minutes. Then the kid and the family and the uh, the kid, the daughter and the sister and the aunt and the mom, I believe, they all go outside. And then the little girl, like every l- little quip that the girl gives, like we should go back in. Mm-hmm. Uh, they bring in a fucking child psychologist, like an adult psychologist, an adult, uh, no, a psychologist that specializes in children. He's like, that child was too calm. Based on my research, <laughs> a child would not react that way in this type of situation. I almost feel as if there was something controlling her. <laughs> yes, exactly. What the fuck, like, mom, you must relax. It'll be over soon. That's you know, a, dude. That's a case of bad acting. It's, it's a case of a shitty child actor. <laughs> um, what else happens? So that's UPN yeah. budget right there, bro. Yeah, the good people at UPN. <laughs> Coming up next after girlfriends, UFOs, <laughs> incident at Canyon Lake, produced by Kelsey Grammer. The so they end up going outside to trying to find the bodies, dude. The shotguns melted. They end up looking, and, and the, another shotgun's melted inside the inside the truck. And the truck's battery's melted. Yeah. So they can't leave. And then they look up, see, they look up uh, up the hill, and then they see the aliens walking out. And then they go. But back. But it's blurry as fuck. We can't see it that way. They end up. They end up uh, going back inside the house. And then the one of the guys probably saw real, real world New York and decided to make a confessional in, the, in his uh, in his bathroom. Yeah, we go from a bunch of screaming, panicking people running back into a house. Everyone in the house is screaming, and then he closes the bathroom door and is dead silent. And says like, "We're about to die. We're about to die. My brothers may have been killed." Uh, so this is just me letting you guys know, you know, I just want to give a quick shout out to my boy, John, what's up? <laughs> with the mixtape, my mixtape fire, bro. I live by Jamaica, down by the beach. <laughs> the, so he goes into his room and a lot of people that are familiar with my Instagram and Snapchat, I did it for both of them. So he, he gets static inside his room and then he turns around and the fucking alien closes his door and the like, I guess puts him in like a free stasis and just takes his camera. Takes his camera and looks at it. Dude, that shit fucking looks scary. It did. <laughs> when I when I'm little, I'll probably freak out. I probably like, oh, yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. Me and my older brother were probably bunking tonight because oh, I'm scared. My God. Dude, so to have this pass off as real, there's probably so many people that thought that this was real. I watched it when it aired, dude. Yeah, and, and it terrified me, dude. It, it was okay. So you were impacted? Uh, yeah, okay. absolutely, dude. Okay. And because I, because I. This from because that's how I looked it up again because I, I and the memory came back like wasn't there some alien yeah mm. and that's how I start looking for it again and then when you watched it again what was your experience it's it's silly dude it's it's, it's yeah. goofy I mean the standards of acting have have evolved right yeah. we we have such great actors that they can really convince you some like oh, yeah, Paranormal yeah. Activity right like if you watch yeah. Paranormal Activity you'll think that was a real couple the fourth kind too right the fourth kind as well. Uh, when you watch this, you see them like speaking as if a script was written. Mm-hmm. No one, no one's talking. Yeah, no one interrupts anyone. Everyone's talking in 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 a order. Everyone's yeah. speaking in an order. Um, they they don't cuss nearly as much as a person really would if oh, they just no, saw some no. fucking aliens. You yes. know. Um, and just the reactions weren't natural. You know, a, a person just got struck with a light beam and she died. Yeah. And yeah. it was like, oh no, oh, damn it. Oh, uh, yeah. I think she's gone, man. And that's it. And we move on from that. Yeah. No one's they, mourning her loss. They just keep it pushing. Uh, a black person's still in the house. <laughs> he didn't run out and just not come back. But, but by the laws of every disaster, he had to go out. Right, right. Um, he had to go out first. One uh, of the first. Uh, no, na- <laughs> no person in their right mind, this is just the, the typical uh, found footage trope. No person in their right mind would hold their camera throughout the entire event of what they were experiencing. No. Once the laser got shot at them, that would have been the end of the camera. We wouldn't have had anything. Yeah. 
And we probably just would have been listening to a bunch of shit. Yeah. But this is what they, you know, this guy held the camera all the way to the end and decided, I'm going to do a confessional because fucking I'm going to die. The, I don't think that's real. The funny part <clears throat> about this uh, d- documentary is at the end, they decide, oh, with technol- with military enhancement technology, we were, we're able, able to, to clear away the static. Cl- clear away the static at the end of some scenes. Mm-hmm. And then they get like a better, uh, like a better, like, uh, image of the alien greys. From the scene where they like laser to laser to cow, yeah, and then when they're coming back down from the hill to confront the rest of the family, and and then they add another scene, the scene where they caught static after they shot the alien. They ended up like going around the alien body. Yeah, they just show completely showed. It was like where did that <clears throat> footage come from? <laughs> that was I, I never in my life have I ever been able to recover static. Film. Hell no. Never. Even Not with even. military grade technology, aka Photoshop, <laughs> fucking Adobe. Oh my God. Okay, speaking of Adobe, now this is the only reason, like, because when Mark showed me, you know, I was laughing at the acting, but then they started doing the effects, and that's when I, that was my last straw. <laughs> so I know how to use After Effects, I know how to use Adobe Premiere, right? Yeah. These are editing systems like this uh, these programs you know especially now our editing is totally different so they'll do a trick that requires like they made it seem like a light came into the room and like bounced around (laughs) right but the person is holding that's holding the camera is moving it and the light stays in frame as as if it's locked into it Mm -hmm. because the light can only move around based on where the camera is looking so it just looks like a ball bouncing around the the parameters of the screen. Oh, I cannot stop that was it. so hideous. It was disgusting. It was bad. It was terrible. And then terrible. there's a the laser effect. It's awful. Like yeah. <laughs> they're, they're trying, oh God. for for those who oh. I, I really want you guys to go uh, on YouTube and find the Fox Eleven. Just type in Fox Eleven lunar landing hoax, and then type in UPN family abduction footage. Oh, it's hilarious. And you'll be able to. Find both of those, but the last one I wanted to bring to the attention of the of, of the, the podcast audience is M Night Shyamalan had this one documentary on sci fi that's two hours long. It's called The Buried Secret of M Night Shyamalan, and this is when M Night was at the peak of his directing career. Yeah. We're talking Six Sense, Unbreakable, Signs, <clears throat> and he was doing The Village. So they wanted to give you that idea that M Night Shyamalan films in Philly. Because that's where his, that's where his uh, his directing power comes from. That's why he's so successful is because he's always in Philadelphia filming, and every time he goes anywhere outside of a radius of where he got uh, submerged into a lake, mm-hmm. he become he becomes a shell of his former self. There's various scenes of him being so paranormal where every time the the people try to get like a hidden camera of footage uh, or hidden camera footage of him. Uh, the audio blares out, or when this fan took a, a Polaroid, co- conveniently it took a Polaroid of him in a bar. He would he would be like uh, phased out, phased out, and then there would be like this little light blare in the side. I think th- I bought into this when I saw it because okay. at this point I was still young um, and didn't know much from anything. You and know? M Night was pretty mysterious, exactly because this guy. Doesn't look like your typical director. It looks odd, mm-hmm. but what kept going on through this uh, through this thing was this guy, the 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 director of the documentary, was uncovering something, and he ended up uncovering the fact that M Night Shyamalan was uh, oh great, there's a horn coming off in the background. It's like getting jacked out there, yo. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it's my car. No, was that yours? No, nah, I was just making sure. Okay. Mm. Also, we're all just gonna. Why yeah, not, dude. We gotta make sure, man. I, I just want my car to make noise. What if well, it's an it's, alien? It's not making noise, so maybe it's already stolen. So we're good. Yeah, it's probably aliens. Yeah. They, He's they like, want, they want to we talk heard about you've this. been talking about our documentary. <laughs> <laughs> it's real. It's M Night. He's out there. So the what ended up happening with M Night Shyamalan is that there was an incident where between ten to eleven years old, there's a gap in his there's a gap in his story, his, his history. He ends up. Long story short, he ends up getting he ends up drowning in a lake in a in a frozen lake, okay. and recovers thirty minutes after because they were able to tell the watch that he had was stuck at six thirty, and the That's time the time he drowned the time they found his body was like seven oh five. The guy gave the ex girlfriend the idea that the creator they, of the documentary yeah the the creator of the documentary gave the idea to his ex girlfriend that M Night 
M. Night Shyamalan's ex-girlfriend. Oh, yeah. M. Night Shyamalan's ex-girlfriend died. She, she, she suggested to him that, uh, to her that M. Night died mm-hmm. during that time, and that's not the same person. And that he's pretty much occupied by spirits. So all of the stories that he's telling based in his films are autobiographical, <laughs> and that these are actually true things based on the experiences right on. of him. Oh, and, man. And yeah. it was... It, it, it like if if like I, why we watched it, it was like I could see if I you know back in the day after seeing his films and watching this I would really be paranoid because they did a pretty decent job oh dude. At, at making it seem like M Night is this like fucking crazy spiritual dude yeah and he's got fucking spirits in him crows and all are all all in his shots but yeah. then uh, there is just the the problem with the documentary is that it follows a script and an arc. And it's telling a full story. And that's what breaks us away. Because a lot of the stuff that's happening is just too convenient. Yeah. It's too... Who would take a Polaroid picture of M. Night and then have it? Like, they went home... Because M. Night calls them up and goes, let's, you guys are kind of, you guys are like, you know, you guys are investigating me. Let's hang out. Learn about me. And then they go out, drink, get, go to a bar, have some yeah. drinks. And a fan comes up to M. Night and goes, oh, can I take a picture of you? I just, I've always wanted to meet you. And she has a Polaroid camera in her purse and takes a picture with him. And then uh, she, the first picture sucks, so she took another with him. Yeah. And then they take, they take M. Night home and they go, I don't feel like. We, we got enough clarity on M. Night. Let's go back to the club we were just yeah, at. She and they there. go back and she's there. <laughs> and she still has the picture. And they look at the picture and he's got this like blurry spiritual thing. Like, it was so dumb. And then <laughs> there's a point where like the actual producer of the whole thing is like, okay, uh, so I'm watching the footage. <laughs> and I, I think we're losing the plot here. Isn't it supposed to be about M. Night's movies? And he's like, no, we got to figure out more. Johnny Depp ended up. Johnny, Johnny Depp shows Johnny up. Depp and, and, and Adrian oh Brody God. both have this cross script. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. It's like a revelation, like a cross revelation together. Exactly. And well, okay. The introduction to Johnny Depp because Johnny Depp was supposed to work with M. Night on whatever film he asked him to be in and uh, Johnny come on he's a phenomenal actor and there is this weird like you can tell when a person is portraying a character so Johnny comes off as this guy that's paranoid because he's like yeah I didn't want to work with M. Night because he had me doing these weird things and they're like well what weird things he had me reciting these strange poems like uh I can't remember it. Like he, he, I can't remember it. But hold on. All of a sudden, he remembers. Yeah. Um, everybody has secrets, and secrets are okay, don't you think? Yeah. And that's why I remember it because that last party was a question, don't you think? And I just said I can't work with him. <laughs> and then they and then they Adrian interview Brody. Adrian Brody like after that. <laughs> Adrian Brody says the same thing. No, because Adrian Brody's like, wait, you, oh, M. Night's great. He's a genius. He's fantastic, and I love doing work with him. And they're like, well, what is he kind of spiritual and strange? He's like. Wait, I can't talk about that right now. Dude. I'm sorry. It's just I, I, I'm not comfortable talking about that. Yeah. You know, because you know everybody has secrets, and <laughs> secrets are okay. Yeah. Don't you think? <laughs> now, when you saw when you saw uh, Slick, now when you saw with me that one time, uh-huh. um, from what you remember, yeah. like it, it looked it looked really authentic, right? I mean, the whole yeah, was, build up. Yeah, because you had fucking Adrian Brody and, and Johnny Depp portraying these. <laughs> come on, they're actors. Beautiful though. That's beautiful. <sighs> It's a lot of work. Exactly. And sci-fi put a lot of money into that. I mean, they made it a two-parter. That's crazy that they and, would go to those lengths, though. And this is the... For what, right? So and then this follow-up film to be trash? They ended up... They ended up going... Films. Films. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lady, uh, his streak lady, ended. Lady in the, the Water, man. That is... Uh, if you want to... The happening. If you want to, like, put someone... If you want to troll someone, give them a copy of Lady in the Water. Like, dude, this is... Dude, you think M. Night is not done yet? Dude, this is a great <laughs> film. Give it to them and just run away. No. You probably no, no. See, you'll that's get, evil. You'll get blocked. That's evil. If you, want, if you want your friend to laugh hard as fuck, give them The Happening. Oh, yeah. Give them the happening. What? No. What? What? No. no. <laughs> Bees are dying. I was so, so stoked on that movie coming out, dude. <laughs> Me too, man. The, John Leguizamo. So. We got like an all-star cast. It was there, dude. Nightmare. It was there. What I, <laughs> what I really like is at the end where they actually go to M. Night's house when he actually oh, in the was documentary. from 10 to 11 or whatever age gap he had. The real estate lady getting creeped out because she doesn't want to be in this house. So then she opens the door to the mass to the room M Night lived in, I guess. Yes, in a, and a, a fucking crow. crow comes out, <laughs> and it's like, bah, bah. how it got in there, I don't know. How it still lived after so long being closed up, I don't know. The but <laughs> but the producer, the producer's like, look at this footage. 
when they go back to the drawing board. Yeah, they board. go back to check so it out. So he's like, you saw that, right? He's like, yeah, I saw the crow. No, no, no. Look in the mirror. And it yeah, turns there's a out mirror, there's be- a mirror inside the room. As they open the door, uh, they, they stop the frame and, and they look in at the mirror before the crow flies out. Yeah. And there's uh, like a ghostly figure, right? It was a yeah. female. And it looks like the kid that M. Night drew one time oh, when he was God, little. Oh, man. Dude, it, it got really like crazy. So if you bought into it, if you're like fully sold on this on this documentary, you'll think that M Night Shyamalan's crazy because exactly. he leaves a voicemail saying you're not going to find anything. You're not going to find anything. Look, this is just a game, and you're 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 just no one's going to believe. You're mad, you. whack, B. No one's going <laughs> to yo. No one's going to believe you, my dude. Yeah. Like yo, your film's mad feminine, B. I'll catch you in the fade, but I'm bigger than that, B. And like and, and yo, at the end of peace it, peace up, it, eight town down, <laughs> M Night out. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, he he, because uh, the 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 person that did the documentary, he lost his funding and he got fired. <laughs> yeah, because M Night said <laughs> fuck that and uh, got him fired. And basically, the dude was like, "I'm going to finish this documentary with or without my my team." And uh, yeah, he's like, "I just need to do one more interview with M Night after all this drama." And then he's waiting on the set of the village, the abandoned set, the abandoned the set of the village. Um, and M Night doesn't show up, but leaves a phone call. And says, yeah, I'm not coming. I'm not coming to your interview. And I'm just going to let you know, I don't know what you're trying to do. I don't know what you're doing. But it's not going to work. They're going to think you're crazy. And fuck you. And basically, yeah, like, basically. hangs up. And that's the end of the documentary. Dude, sci-fi put, on, put a good one on, man. But, you know, as we watched it, it was just nonsense. Of course. Yes. Nonsense. The way you guys describe it, I'm into it. It sounds like a good <laughs> movie, right? But when you watch it, you kind of... Uh, uh, it, it, it like it creeps you out a bit because it's like it, it, there's a part that we're mature enough to understand that this is fake. Yeah. So as you watch it, when you see fucking Johnny Depp, all of a sudden you're just like, okay, this is already bullshit. Because Johnny Depp opens the door and he's like, oh wait, oh, you guys brought cameras. Mm-hmm. I didn't expect that, <laughs> but my house is perfectly clean. Come on. In. <laughs> oh, you guys, you guys cool? You want a beer? Here's a beer. It's JD, dude. He's the man. And he's <laughs> the man. And Johnny Depp does Johnny Depp too well. So you yeah. see that and you're like, Johnny Depp, you're acting. And then when they have Adrian Brody, it's like you're fucking Adrian Brody, and <laughs> Adrian well Brody c- kills it. Might as well have a cigarette in his hand. Like, everybody oh. has cigarettes. Everybody has cigarettes. Don't Everyone you has know? cigarettes. Don't. I mean, <laughs> secrets. Wait, can we cut? But yeah, <laughs> okay. you, you guys can. I, I actually. Shyamalan I, did. Was that a good? No background. Oh, there's, there's all these scenes where Shyamalan's present and the fucking audio's jacked up, but it's like. You know, you could tell that somebody was in a studio going, "Let's put some static here. Yeah. Let's fuck around here." Um, yeah. I I, have, I recommend it strangely. I do. No, I do too. Because it's it's like done well. The only thing that sucks is that you already know that M Night's not fucking crazy M. or it's paranormal. Shit. Yeah, this incident even happened. Also, but, yeah, those creepy fans that are like, oh, we just stand outside. His house. <laughs> yeah, we just stand outside his house and chill. There's like five dudes with, in hoodies with hood, hoodies yeah. on, and they're just like, we just stand out of his you, house, you know, of his house, some and wait. Fight club shit. I know, yeah. No, he's like, you know, he's one with the force or some <laughs> shit. I forget what he says. Like, you know, he's entwined with the spirits and shit. So <laughs> I definitely recommend the Shyamalan. Shama- one. Yeah, the buried secret of M Night Shyamalan. Um, and then, uh, actually, all three. I recommend yeah. all three. The Apollo Moon Landing from Fox. Watch and, that one last because it, it's it, not as funny. It's like yeah, actually pretty. It's serious. actually like more of a, a like a, a, a scientific yeah. science. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys, uh, you guys don't want to fuck with science. And then an incident at Canyon Lake, I believe. <laughs> yeah, from, an incident at Canyon Lake is totally worth your time. It's hilarious. It's it's like really watching the. It, it's the lowest budget of a Blair Witch film. Exactly. The lowest budget. Yeah. And, um, yeah, the M. Night film is just... It's astounding in the sense of... You guys went all the way out of your way to make M. Night look like a god. Yeah. And you failed. Yeah. Well, I want to let you guys know here on the Mark and Andre show is that... These three documentaries... You could tell that... Uh, uh, production companies were going off of the Blair Witch Train. They wanted to do mockumentaries. They wanted to do found footage documentaries, uh, and some of them worked. They did, yeah, you know, and some conspiracy ones worked too. Because I remember Fox actually did some more UFO footage ones as well. They kept but going. The, with these it. were before Blair Witch, dude. Oh yeah. Definitely. Well, well, the the alien one for sure. Definitely, yeah, definitely. The alien one was for sure. Yeah, but the alien ones, I'm not sure. Blair Witch is a good example of great actors. You know, yeah, you know, yeah. Doing so it was. A, it, it just brought on the the avenue of found footage, and I mm-hmm. thought that was a. It's a good. It's a good type of genre. It could be done well. Yeah. 
It could be. Could. And, Andre, I want to leave the floor for you for your shameless promotion. We'll close off the Mark and Andre podcast show. We'll wrap it up quickly. Uh, I'm a, a hip-hop instructor. I have an awesome YouTube channel, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it. If you guys are interested in learning about the intricacies of hip-hop music, uh, you can check me out at youtube.com slash Andre Gainer. That's youtube.com slash A-N-D-R-E-G-A-I-N-E-R. When you check it out, basically uh, the channel is... Um, you know, I have a series called Bar for Bar Breakdowns where we take a popular rap song and we dissect it all the way through. Um, I share all of the uh, complexities of the rhyme schemes, the delivery, why they said what they said, how they did it, and why it's important. Ch- kind of just trying to show the intellectual side of hip-hop songwriting. Um, we're almost at 20,000 subscribers. I promise that at 20,000 subscribers, I would be breaking down a popular song by the rapper Lupe Fiasco. The song is called Mural. It's a nine minute lyrical expose and it's going to be like a three to four hour long video. That'll break up uh, throughout the live. course of... Yeah, live. <laughs> I'll do it off the top of my dome. <laughs> um, and it'll be broken down in December. So cool. if you guys are interested, yeah, you, you really will learn something. If you don't like rap, my goal with the channel is to show you that there is a relevance to rap. And it's actually the highest form of poetry available. I mean, you guys listen to me on the show and how you know articulate and intelligent I speak. I am a rapper. And I represent rappers. And we are all intelligent individuals depending on who you listen to. So that's it. Sold. Done, motherfucker. Sold, sold me, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm on board with you, dude. <laughs> now, Slick, would you guys, would you like to leave some shameless promotion for your channel as well? Um, sure. Uh, once again, I'm at, uh, I'm under Green Thing Productions as uh, YouTube.com/slash Mr. Green Thing six six six, and uh, and all our live videos. Uh, we do, we actually do um, a live video every day, whether it's uh, video gaming or podcasting, and that's under. Um, Mr. Stream Thing, so it's youtube.com slash Mr. Stream Thing, so GTP. <clears throat> and um, yeah, we're up to, you know, 185 subscribers. <laughs> I promise you if we get to 200, uh, I'll blow myself live. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I want to see what happens. I can't, when, I can't <laughs> compete with that, dude. Just I want to see what happens when we get to 20,000. <laughs> I'll blow you, 20,000 dudes, dude. It's just a big device. I'll, like, I'll blow t- all my subscribers. <laughs> or try Or do a human centipede that thing. Oh, shit. That's what I'm talking about. I'm down uh, for yeah, that. I mean, 20,000? I, nah. I don't know. That's, that, that, that's where I'm at in life. I don't know. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I want to thank you guys for being uh, part of the show today. And I want to thank the viewers at home, whether you listen live or going to download it later. I want to thank you guys for tuning in to the Mark and Andre podcast show. You guys have a good night and take care. Westside. Suck my...